Mr. Wolf, what's yeah. your all time high on benching? Mm, back in the day and recent, but 110. Um, remember the time I nearly killed myself? I yeah. thought I was doing 90. I didn't count the weight of the bar. Okay. So I had 90 on the weight. The bar's 10. That's why I asked you how much the bar was. Mm. And I think I did. Did it drop on your chest? I did eight reps. No, I wouldn't, it wouldn't drop on his chest. I would have been dead. Oh, you no, you weren't there. That's the same. Oh, you okay. weren't there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, like, I, I did, I did, yeah, I nearly killed myself. I did. <laughs> I did. I think I got to. Laughing, you know? I got to five reps and I was like, raw, this is not that bad. I can do ten. And sometimes, easily. sometimes it just goes. Yeah, and that's exactly me? what happened. Yeah. So basically I went five. It's like, right, this one has... And then on six, we're like, oh no, no, it was six was fine. This is this is a joke. It's like five, I was like, oh, this is not as bad as I thought it was. Six, yep, seven, yep, eight, eight. And you're stuck there, innit? What the fuck? I couldn't get it to that little so piece. So you had to slide mm. underneath. That little piece to get it over. I couldn't get it over mm. and it just came straight back down and yeah, man. You had to slide it out, man. That's it. Yeah, bro, I had to roll it down my stomach and there, there was no power left the, afterwards. The, the thing that, Damn near dad. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, rodents and other small insects, welcome to the Eloquently Saying Nothing podcast. This is episode 305, shout out Miami. 305, mm. shout out Miami. Miami. Shout out. I was saying it last week that Miami, I just, that's my home, 305. I, I was thinking about going back to Miami again, I'm looking for holidays for me, for me and my missus. And 305. I just saw Miami and I said, you know what, I'm like, you know what, I don't even like Miami that much. I just like I just like Miami, but I didn't. I don't like it that much. Ooh. But I don't mind going there. It's like I feel like I, had, I didn't go there enough to do what I need to do. How long are you there for? Five Welcome days to Miami. Days. That's all you need. Mm. I, I, to be honest, I think the most I've ever spent is about. Yeah, but we only really went out once, and then I just went shopping most of the time. All right, I, so I've never been just to Miami. So explain actually. to somebody who's never been to Miami what is it that gives you this gas? What is? It? How would you? Mm. If you, you hadn't said last week, can it? If if you had to sell it, and not oversell it, but just sell it. If you had to describe it as you see it. Well, you got Lincoln, where you can do your shopping. you got Ocean Drive, where you can just walk and just enjoy yourself. you got the beach. I'm just talking about the strip, by the way. So this is... This it's is, very much like Rio a bit. We, we were at the shopping. Because Rio, got, I mean, uh, uh, obviously Miami's got better shopping, but... but a bit like Rio. Rio's, the shopping is, is, is far away. Okay, yeah. If, you, if, you, if you're walking down the beachfront in, my, in Rio de Janeiro... What's the name of the beach I was at? Which sure one? Copacabana or Ipanema? Which one? I don't know. I can't remember which one. Copacabana. That's the one that's not right outside the world. That's where, that's where we were. Yeah. yeah, but it's there. But then to, to the, to, so you, you got this long road mm-hmm. where you have these fancy cars, people going up and down in, in fancy cars. Mm-hmm. On one side of the road, you got the beach. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, you just have restaurants and um, other places for you to, to frequent. And okay. then me as a shopper, you have your Lincoln, which is cool. But then you have the outlets as well. Did you go to the outlets? What? I I I spent. Do you not, do you not see the picture where my wife is sitting down and she's got like about fifty bags next to her? I bought. This is on my honeymoon when I went there. Also mm. on my honeymoon. We yeah. bought two duffel bags, and I don't mean small size. Two whole duffel bags Got and filled them up the when we went to the thingy. So did we? I bought so. M- okay, it's a competition. It's a <laughs> oh yeah. I spent so much money in Ralph Lauren that I bought the same suit twice because on that trip, I went to Miami, LA and Hawaii and Hawaii has wicked shopping as well. And then went to the outlet place in Hawaii as well. It was um something weekend, Memorial weekend or whatever. So the, 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 the deals were wicked. It was the outlet anyways. And then it was Memorial Day weekend thingy. I bought the same stuff twice. I had to give it to one of my, my nephews because mm. I, I didn't even know I bought it twice. I went mad. I remember mm. when I went to the polo shop in Figgy, I bought myself an, a, a puffer jacket there. And the way the, the, woman, the woman at the till was just looking at me like, she's crazy, crazy. I'm like, what's up? She goes, I just don't understand how anyone can buy this. She's like, because we're in Miami, mm-hmm. there's no, no one ever comes to buy this. Uh, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, we in England, this is going to do me well. She's like, yeah, no one, no one will buy this. <laughs> like, no, I don't. <laughs> when I see people come and buy this stuff, I'm like, where do you live? Like, you're buying these things. I was like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, That's funny. Yeah, yeah. I just, just, and then you have the mix of cultures. 
Yeah. Because you got your... You, Hispanics. You got your, yeah. You got your Caribbean. All types of Caribbean is there. Mm-hmm. There's loads of Cubans there. Cuban, yeah. That's, Haitians that's, that's as a, well. That's a Cuban uh, it's really uh, haven. Cool, isn't it? And then you got your blacks. You got your... It's just... It's, just, it's just a mix-up. It's a nice mix-up. And it's like people are just all right. I know there's... I know in certain places in Miami, innit, there's certain like the ghetto ones. It's... Yeah, I didn't, it's grim. I, I didn't go to. But yeah, I didn't go to the ghetto. That's, that's when you cross over the bridge. Yeah, I don't go to the ghetto. <laughs> I don't. I don't. When you come off the airport, I cross over the bridge and then that's, I stay yeah. on that side. I don't. I don't yeah. ever go back onto the to the other no, side of the bridge. So the I stay in the bougie part. We gonna get So maybe, maybe that's right because I'm just living in the bougie. New York and Miami for me in in America. I didn't go to any other strip clubs. I haven't been to a strip club in in Miami either. Yeah, in fact, I haven't been to a strip club in America. King of Diamonds in America. Yeah, full stop. King of Diamonds. I've been to Hooters. That's that's. You don't know who it is? What's who it is? Like, what's oh, who okay, is? right. I'm sorry, man. I'm just saying. Somebody's serving you a food with, with, with top on. What kind of nonsense be that? Okay, okay. My bad. Is that, that is, yeah. That's weird, isn't it? Well, like, they kind of like serving your food and the people that are serving you are deliberately sexualizing them. Enticing. Yeah, it's a bit mad, isn't it? Well, that's the same with these, these bar, bar girls, isn't it? Or whatever. Yeah. The, the bartenders or whatever. Well, no, but with the, with the star tenders, it's kind of it's slightly different because I think Hooters is, is a family affair, isn't it? Yeah, you can take your, your kids to Hooters. You could, yeah. It's yeah. a bar though. Hooters is still a bar. Okay. But, um, it's like, just but, but it's not something I'm saying, yeah, I'm t- me and my kids are going Hooters. Yeah, it's a you, bit weird though. Is man. it different at night? Hooters? Mm. I don't know. I've, I don't think I've been there at night. I can't remember. The first time I went Hooters, I was in like 2007. I can't remember. It was like years and years ago. It's a strange psychology though. Like, oh yeah, the woman who's bringing you your drinks is... Wearing a top, I'm, I'm surprised. But to be it's honest, it accentuates they, her breasts. But they do that kind of thing. I was talking about this the other day. They do this kind of thing in a lot of places of work. They'll do it at uh, wine bars, at bars, and um, they do it even in uh, uh, places like Foot Locker, JD Sports. They will purposely employ good-looking young girls. No, that's that's oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's you that's, understand. Right. That's one side of it. The other side of it, I'm saying, is that the uniform. At Hooters is a T-shirt. Look at my breasts. Yes, that is designed specifically. It's not even a T-shirt. It's like a, almost like a swimsuit top. Yeah, or whatever. to accentuate that area. Mm-hmm. It's a bit mad. <laughs> this is a very interesting uh, conversation. Very ironic what uh, Mister Wolf was saying about hiring people to dress a certain way. Pretty yeah. privilege. Oh, blah blah blah. Because uh, trust me, clearly again, it seems like there's another week where Joe Biden is just in the, in the newspapers or whatever in, in the media, and that, and that was one of the reasons why well, he was hiring. No, he had a, a lady called Olivia Dope that was on one of her, the, his podcasts called "See the Thing Is," and um, that's such a trash name for a podcast. The, the podcast is also what's it called? <laughs> See the thing. See, is. See the thing is. Like in the sentence, you know, you know. Mm. See, the yeah, thing I, I is, yeah. so um, um, what, and she left basically. Thank she just you. left impromptu. No mm. one knew why she left. Well, uh, the people that gone on Reddit knew why she left. <laughs> uh, anyone that watched that or seen that episode knew why she left, but uh, but uh, no one really said why she left. But um, during the episode that he was on, he was basically just basically sexualizing the woman. And part of the thing he was saying is that you know, you girls don't dress sexy enough. She dresses sexy. Look at her. Look at the rest of you girls. You don't dress sexy. Blah blah blah. I want you to be dressed like this woman. So basically, almost like the Hooters situation that we were talking about now. Like you must, he's telling them that you you, you must be sexing yourself up. You can't just be coming in your tracksuits and blah blah blah. You're on a podcast. You're meant to look sexy for the for the listeners. And take into account, there's there's three uh, women hosts, mm. and he knows the two that he's talking about need to dress more sexy. He knows them Very well, well yeah. enough to talk outside. He knew them before the podcast. The third one, who he's saying, she's look look at her. Look how she's come. She's the one that walked out. Yeah, she's the one that left. He doesn't know her. Oh, okay. One of the other two guests bought uh, oh, host, sorry, bought her into the podcast. I thought you just said host. That's what I thought. But you said host. So let's say before, before we whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get me cancelled, man. I'm, said, not, I'm not budding damn. out here. I'm not budding out here. Mm. Apparently, I might have lost his, uh, his uh, sponsorship from Yeah, I heard, Cash I, heard, well. I heard. But I think he's just keeping it quiet until we'll things die down and then he'll catch up. I'm a bastard, man, because I want him to lose it. I, wow. I, I like the drama. I like it. I like yeah, it. I like it. Domestic violence. Domestic violence. Oh, my God. I like it. Mommy, that's crazy. That's weird. I just. I just want something a little bit of drama, man. Why, it's like drama? why do you like drama for? That's weird. I don't mind if he gets it back, but just for I just for talking. You wanted to go? Yeah. Oh my god. Why are you scared? Why are you scared, man? Why are you scared, homie? Oh, oops. All right. Um, but, but yeah, man. So basically, during the episode, because I don't want Mister Wolf to think it was just that, because he might think that. But um, he also said that he, he wants to fuck her oh. several times. He said it. Oh, is he a single man? Joe it's, Biden? No, it's not. It doesn't I, matter. I don't, I, don't, I don't think at the time he it doesn't matter. Whether he's, he's a boss, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't matter whether he's single or not. That's seen. Did you just say right? but? But yeah, well, it does matter if he's single or not. Of it doesn't. It does. It's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. Period. So, I know your boss comes into your into your into your place of work and says, "Mr. Wolf, I want to fuck you. Are you cool with that?" 
Is that all right? If it's a sexy woman. No, but it's if it's in front of everybody else as well. Like, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. not. It's in not in front of the other cast members and, and the, the pod, crew. And, and the, the crew. Po- on, a po- on a podcast, it's mad. But no, they can't, they can't, they can't I'm, I'm not saying that it's. I'm not saying that it's not inappropriate. But you I'm just, saying I'm but? Just like, I was like, what's the but? I'm, I'm wondering is no because uh, simple Simon. It doesn't matter whether he's um, in a relationship. It or doesn't not. for me. I don't think regarding that. The, depending on how you look at it, if it's got anything to do with it being inappropriate, it don't matter if he's in a relationship or not. Yeah, no, but I was thinking about his wife. That's that's the first or his so you, girlfriend. So somebody says to their employee <coughs> that I want to fuck you. Uh, he's he, he's uh, the male uh, um, CEO of a company comes in on a podcast. Sees a get because you could see that she's phys- um, visibly not basically uncomfortable uncomfortable about this situation. She's very. She even says I'm uncomfortable. Blah 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 in the certain thing right during the episode. She was laughing as well. I, 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 would, I, I, mm. I wouldn't necessarily jump that I saw. I don't, that she was I don't know. If, I don't know if you saw because I saw one that I don't think it was edited because when I was watching it, I could. I, sorry, when I was watching it, I was squirming like this is really uncomfortable, and I I, I, I don't know if this is the same one that everyone else has seen. I haven't. No, because I, I saw it re- when it happened. I saw it as well when it when because um uh, something happened because that's the only other episode I saw and I saw it when it happened. So um, you saw it so, the same, so the I, same I, day that it came out. Not, I don't know if it's, no, it wouldn't have been the same. Yeah, day. I saw it the same it, day it, it came it out. Been, maybe maybe I don't know. It must have been something on Twitter or something like that. Something alerted me that this episode of this podcast people should watch it because of um Joe, how Joe was going on. Right. It wasn't just because Joe was on it. There was okay. something going on, and that's the episode. Because that's watched. why I watched it because Joe was on it. So that I was like, oh, let me watch it, and it was bad. But basically, it, so just going back to what I was saying anyway. So you're saying the first thing that came into your brain when somebody was saying about the sexual thing, no, 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 was no. Oh, you, that's the first thing you said was like, no, I didn't say that. That's the first that, thing that, I said. I said that I was thinking about. No, you didn't his, say that. That's the, that I'm saying that is the first thing you said. Yeah, but it's not the first thing I was thinking about. Okay, but I'm, I'm just saying. Um, that's what I said. I must have been watching, uh, flicking channels. And he's on this program in Hip Hop Wives or something like that. Yeah, that, that's long. That's, that's no, long. but listen, listen. The reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is that when I saw that, he was seeing someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so his, they, they've done that. But he's still okay. got, he has still got a girlfriend though. Okay, so that's why I was asking, has he got a girlfriend or is he married okay. or whatever it, the case may I'm be. I'm just saying because it sounded like you, the first woman that you thought of wasn't the woman that was actually being told that he, he like the employee woman. The first one you thought about was his own woman. Not saying you cared about him. I'm just saying the first woman that came to your brain seemed to be his his missus rather than that woman. Mm, no, oh. not necessarily. You okay. know what I mean? Oh. It's, I, it's like when people say things like that, I'm not overly surprised. Okay. Well, Especially in that kind of environment. You know what I mean? It doesn't surprise me at all. It was bad. And, and the thing that I... I don't like it when men call women bitches. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that at all. The same way I don't like it when girls call men the N-word. I don't like it when men call uh, women bitches. I don't like it. How about when men are called bitches? Do you? I don't mind if they call men a bitch. <laughs> yeah, as, as long as they deserve it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to call a man a bitch. And he was he was basically going to them calling them bitches. And they was like, you can't just be calling us bitches. I'm pretty certain he calls them that when then Exactly. It, 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 because it, he said it to Olivia. Uh, he said it to Mandy as well. She she was, at the, the one I saw, she was, she had the computer in front of her and I think he wanted her to play the, yeah, the sound effect. and he's like, bitch, bitch, bitch play the sound oh. effect. Yeah. And so that's when the other one, it seemed like... Or maybe she, he said it first, but yeah, he... Yeah, it's almost like, let me jump in behalf because she like, don't know me like and that. you are cool, mm. but you don't know this girl just to, just to say that. Yeah, so then that was when, I, that, that's when I was just first, I let her like, you can't just be calling this woman bitch like that. And he was just doing it and I was like, oh, she, anyway, we already established that Joe's his own downfall. He's just like, when he's on a roll and stuff, he doesn't know when to stop. And he just didn't know when to stop. So when, I, then they actually had a break in the podcast, apparently, where they had a discussion. He could see that she was uncomfortable. They said, all right, cool. You know, are you uncomfortable? She said, yeah, but, you know, we can just blah, blah, blah. And he goes, you know what? Just to squash it, I'll give you a hug during the episode. And, you know, we'll keep, we'll keep it at that. And she was like, all right, cool. She didn't really want to do it. But the other cast members were like, yeah, just do it, just do it, just do it. So he gives her a hug. And then when he's giving her a hug, he starts humping her. Oh, come on, man. This is... Ugh. I, I would, that's a bit strong. He was gyrating his waist. It doesn't matter. That's, she said she didn't feel it. Thing. She said she didn't know it happened until she saw Sorry, it on, a, on, on the, the video. Yeah. So she, so. But it was, so okay, gyrating his waist against her, yeah? I don't think it was such an. In, in a sexual. Okay. Remember, she said, she said that she leaned over to hug him. You know that hug that you do to somebody mm-hmm. that you're not too sure about, but you have to hug okay. them. It was, so simu- so, it was simulating so she, Yeah, so the arms were all around him, but her body was not touching his body. She le- she leaned over so that it wouldn't happen. So maybe their shoulders were touching or whatever, and that uh, was like the, the, the most a, of it. He's a shimmy. Yeah, yes. so he was just doing that. So he, I don't think he was touching her. Uh, fair and enough. F- fair for, enough. Her, for her to say, I didn't know. 
Well, she saw it. You would, so enough, if somebody's yeah. gyrating against fair you, enough. you would know that. If you were to defend his ways, no, 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 no. I'm just saying, call it as it is. That's not, if it's bad enough, you don't need to make it any worse. I'm just saying he was gy- okay, gyrating then. Yeah, yeah. Gyrating. Like humping is, humping is, is a big deal, you know. No, that, no. That's horrible though, man. Oh. Yeah, so then um, basically she left because she said that kind of work. Because after they said, ah. Oh, Wait, she you left during the podcast? No, or? after. Like, after a the few, podcast. A few, a few episodes. Yeah, after, do you want to, you know, put this in? And she was like, just leave it, blah, blah, blah. Because she said that she felt a bit pressured. Um, that she felt pressured. Even though they weren't pressured, she felt pressured to leave it in. But then um, one of the co-hosts said, nah, we've got to take this out because it just looks bad. You don't look comfortable, blah, blah, blah. And they took out a lot of the stuff. But obviously... She knew what happened and she left. But um, so yeah, so as I said, it's quite interesting that you brought up the people wanting them to dress because that was one of the big things she was moaning about the fact that he kept telling her that she must. She never thought of herself in that way. She thought she was just dressing up, and then, then he started sexualizing her to the point now where she was sort of thought that the, the co-hosts, well, at least one of them, was a bit jealous of her because he kept on talking about her in that sexual manner, and the other one is a bit funny. And so yeah, I'm, I'm, I know people that have owned businesses where they've needed you know, frontline staff or what have you. And they Front purposely dun, 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 and intentionally dun. employ good looking men and women. That's it, not, that's not the problem. I'm I'm not suggesting, but I'm just, you know, just, just go, just going the, off. The, the good looking men and women thing. That's not the issue. I think, or oh, I should say, let me say this. That's not the issue. I don't take issue with that. Depending it, on what the job is. Yeah. And but it becomes it. problematic for me when you start to dictate how they're supposed to dress. Well, it, there is a problem with that because if somebody is perfectly qualified and, you know, to your uh, uh, interpretation of what good looking is, you know, they, they, they won't employ someone who may be a little bit overweight or or someone yeah, who, you know. Yeah, because um, unfortunately, and it's not that I agree with it, but in context of this situation, uh, the aesthetic becomes part of the qualification. It's not just... Your it's mental ability. Certain roles. The, the, the but I don't agree necessarily. Agree. I'm not saying I agree with you, but the aesthetic part becomes part of the job description. It doesn't, it's not, it's not outside of the job okay, description. Okay, so give, un, me, give un, me a job, give me a unwritten. job where you, give me a job where you think you need to look good looking. It's an unwritten That's role. not modeling. No, yes. f- for me, mm. you just gave an example. What? Like a, a JD Sports or, or a Night Town in, in, um, in Oxford Circus. So you think you should look good looking? No, no, I'm saying that it helps. No, but if, I'm asking the question. You, when give you, me an example of what you. So then let people talk then. When but I was asking him, I was asking you. you Sorry, you cut, yeah. simple sermon. Well, um, I, for me, this, it's not, I, it's going to be hard for me. Mm. I can see why they would do it. Front of house kind of positions. Front of house in the sense where you're customer facing. Okay. Um, you don't have to do anything too technical. You don't have to know the ins and outs of something. I can see why you would put somebody who is uh, generically, aesthetically pleasing mm. in front. Okay. Whether I agree with it or not, probably not, but I can see how the mechanism works. So you, any any customer facing customer relations job you think is an acceptable, uh, well, not necessarily acceptable, but you can understand why they will put something I can understand the, why this And you I, can understand as well. I understand the psychology uh, behind it. You cannot understand why somebody puts a host, let's call them a host. So it's whether somebody greets you at a restaurant, somebody greets you at a bar, somebody greets you at a shop, if it's that kind of shop, a host. Somebody no, that, not necessarily, no. You don't see why somebody would say, the per- the first person I want um, a customer to see when they walk into my establishment is the best looking person. No, because they might be dumb. But that, as that's why I said. Nobody's, talk- nobody's talking about I, that. I actually, stip- <laughs> I actually stipulated if there's a job where the person is non-technical, they don't have to have the full ins and outs of anything. It is just a front of house role. Yeah, but it doesn't make a difference. Even if you don't, you don't have to. Have to- there's some people that don't know how to put people to a table. And that should be the most simplest thing to do. Okay, but, they, but, but they, then they don't get the job. Yeah, but they, they, if they did get the job because they're good looking, that's no, what I'm saying. I'll get, then I'll fire her and get an, uh, another good looking him, and get another one that can do the job and is good looking too. You know, like, what's it? What's that? Um, what's that shop? Uh, the Hollister and and uh, the, the, I've the, never been in there. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, but, uh, I'm not good looking enough. Then okay, if we go down fifth, um, <laughs> let's go back to America again. Yeah, but that, I, that I, shop there actually I, is that I, the same shop they was complaining about that I, you have to be a certain way to. I don't know if they do it in this country, but when I was in 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 New York last. Or the time before last. You have to go live in America. You, when I was there the time before last, you walk down Fifth Ave, the shop is there, and I had to stop stop and be like, what? Because they had a woman in a bikini at the front and a man in shorts, topless, thingy, just standing at the door. Six pack, ass that's, cheeks that's, hanging out. That's sexualizing. Yeah? The woman's ass cheeks just hanging out. Man's just six pack is just there. In New York? Did you look? Yeah, on Fifth Ave. Did you look? That's crazy. That's that's what they do at that shop. What's it? What's it called? Um, Hollister and, and something. Called, and something. Um, yeah, I can't. I, said, I can't go there. That's the, it's the sweet boy shop. Holes and jigglos. It's the sweet boy shop. They, it's, the lights are even dim in there. It's like well, what are they selling in there? 
Like clothes, clothes. apparel. Mm. So, like casual, casualish <laughs> apparel. But is, is on, but, but, there, I think that is one of like the most known shops that you have to be a certain look for you to be able yeah. to work in that shop. Okay. Or, or even, they don't even want people that looks a certain way to even be in the shop. You can't be like me. I, there's no point in going in there. They, they don't do clothes for people my size. It's like it's a bit like Zara. <laughs> yeah. I, really can, I, can find something. Something. I can find something. I remember my missus bought me some Zara tra- uh, trousers for Christmas and I was uh, like, this is not going to fit me. And it actually fit. Oh, yeah. it did? Yeah, it did okay. fit me, but I was shocked because I was thinking, I can't be wearing yeah, Zara. They, Are you mad? I think Zara had a thing, um, a little time where people were backlash. There was a bit of backlash about the same thing. You're talking about sizeism and all the rest of it. Mm. So they in, they added a couple of sizes. And I say a couple, I mean literally two extra sizes mm. to their to their offering. There you go, you fat bastards. Yeah, <laughs> because it, it, I think it was, if I'm not mis- mistaken, for the man them, the trousers used to go to 34, I think it was. Okay. No, yeah, no, exactly. No, it was that, no, I think it was 34. And then it they, they extended that. it to 40. It would have been more. If I remember it correctly. Because I'm a regular in Zara. It was more than that. I know, you, I know you what size, what size, what size do you wear though Zara. Sweet I'm 32 so why would you be looking at anything above 32 because you just see it in you front of you because innit? you would just see <laughs> you just see you understand <laughs> okay so <laughs> I'm, I'm getting mocks here now 32, no, 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 32 no. short I'm assuming yeah wow he said he's a regular I, I, I know that's why I said short because he's lying you guys mock you for no reason you want to give bro. me some love and affection no reason mockage have you even enjoyed ourselves no, I don't. Oh, wow. I don't mock you. And look, look at me saying, look, we, we have no topics. <laughs> this is what it comes down to. All right. Um, yes. Thank you very much for tuning in to Eloquently Say Nothing, episode mm. 305. Plug. We have no topics, really. But has, this is what I'm saying. We, we're professionals. We're professionals. We're professionals. Parks. 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 Even as I even understand what I say. Parks. Um, yeah. 305. Hashtag ESM pod to start or join in the conversation. Plug. At ESN Podcast on all the social medias. If you plug, plug it. Thing, uh, <laughs> if you unplug this thing because you're struggling your this thing. That sounds a bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. Hold on, let me turn up the whole thing. Let me make sure this is. Get so, down. Yeah, I am Stavros Bus. Get down. And you can catch me at Stavros Bus everywhere. In the room with me this very night, I have. Tonight. Simple Simon. <laughs> Our reputation should have exceeded us already, but it's important that for all of you, you understand that when it comes to the subject of war, we do not hesitate, nor are we afraid or threatened by any of you. Gaza. That was a short excerpt from a poem by the Right Honourable Alkaline. I don't know if you know if he's Right Honourable. He's too young, to be honest with you. Mm. And this is too fresh, Mm. to be honest with you. How old is he? Um, He's probably in about 20, 24, something like that. But he's young in the dancehall game and it's only been like two years. So I don't even know if he's a right honourable. How has been out for longer than two years? No, I'm saying the songs are two years old. But it's a little bit longer than two years old, to be honest with you. But yeah, it goes a little something like this. Mm -hmm. 27. He's 27 now. Bro, I'm old, boy. Welcome to the SN Podcast. Yeah. Yeah, from. Streets don't know a man legit in a war, never fidget in a war, not what? Them a boots up a little midget in a war, him a bitch in a the war, track smart, stop on. Everybody know I'll be a box, some kick you get a shoot and never sing that song. Oh, me a tax up pussy, flop can't one word, no say you no bad man. Anyway, me see your pussy, me a boss your face, show you say you can't style one done. One done. Money shoot up, you care where your man buy, give you make a wife, you left that abandoned. One done. You get 30 million dollar water ride and a rain dress a price and a pack of tampon. A buy tattoo pan. Oh, oh, oh. My cow, if you want beat, man, I make your nose. Right. There's alkaline bleach. He sure does, bro. There's alkaline bleach. Mm. I don't know. I'm not he, sure. He does, bro. Anyway, Stand when you finish, it. I want to talk about mm. bleach again. At Simple Simon FB on Twitter, I don't have Instagrams. I don't have it. Mm-hmm, Gaza, mm-hmm. we say forever alliance at the foundation. That's what we want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By rights, I shouldn't have played that song still because it's, a, it's a diss track and he was going at Popcorn. And Popcorn are the real puppy, you know what I mean? But I like the song still. Is Popcorn an honorary... Um English. Honorary English? Yeah. What, oh, because of how many times he's... <laughs> he's Popcorn that guy, blood. He's that guy. Popcorn. Man. Popcorn. I get the impression he's honorary, man. I, I, it's like he... I think he knows, like, 
Then, he knows the end. I feel like he knows like London, like well to walk. Like if you dropped him in London, he could walk around. He's like, I know, I know how to take a bus. I know, I know what, to, I know this area. Probably, boy, probably Brixton. I think Pretty Patel will send him straight back. Boy. Wow, pretty, 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 pretty. Right. Um, well, we will get to pretty later. Also in the room, we have my brother, your brother, Big Wahala. Oh, big Wahala Insta. A big Wahala on Twitter. What's good, people? Smash. Smash. And uh, let's shout out our brother who is not here, DJ Webb. Spider Sense Tingly. My brother. Yes. Mm-hmm. Shout him out. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, salute my brethren. Salute. And last but not least, we have the senior. I am in this hat at the moment, innit? You don't need to show some damn respect. A man said senior citizen. Get me. <laughs> How can you be wearing some sort of short respect. trousers and you're, you still got jackups? Oh, wow. Oh, Leco. <laughs> You know that one. Oh, Lekon. Yeah, I know he's Dada. Yeah. Oh, Lekon. That means no damn respect. Show some, in fact, no ballet. No. <laughs> you understand? I will not do it. Yeah, I will never do it. do it. Oh, Lekon. All right. Um, yeah, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> the remix. What's going on? What's going on, people? Mr. Wolf in the building. Um, yeah, I am the oldest member of the podcast uh, for the last few weeks. And yeah, man needs me. Man need to show a little bit more respect. You feel me? Here we go. You know what I'm it starts now. Yeah, you know I mean, you I love need the to way show that that Jews just throw that out there when they're ready. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, because you know, I think I think I have to fry it in there now. You know, I think I have to you say have to how it is. It. I have to say how it is, and I will talk how I will talk. God damn it! You're gonna tell me how I'm gonna talk. So we have to respect you because you're closer to the end of your life than the rest of us are. No, actually, who's to say? Some people that are older are a lot more healthier than people knew, that are younger. I, I you get it, me? Shade, I know it. I knew it. Oh, you, know shade. you know what I'm saying? You know. But anyway, you just can catch it, me just on say Instagram. Just say I have breasts. Just say it. Yeah. Just say I have breasts. You said it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying you're a D cup. What? <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're, you're biased. You know that. I'm, you're childish. You're childish. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever measured? Um, wow with well, my cup yeah no, Shots, I think it's a bit yeah, the it's fact a you said um, I was waiting for you to say <laughs> I was waiting to see what you were going to come it's with a B, it's a B wait a minute I was like eh a man said it's a B I yeah. never I, I never quite get it though I would get what it's, I, it's, I, I know it's what like it's, the back though isn't it no 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 no. you, you have um, circumference which and is cup. and the cup is the letter the letter yeah mm. I can tell a woman's breast size I've had people, women argue with me until they get checked and I, actually, I told you I was right Wow, I know, Perf. and I don't even need to see it. I don't even need to see the full flesh. I can see it through your blouse. Where's your brother's? Shout out, Joe Budden. Uh, oh, his, he's gonna be <laughs> touching your nipple. Um, he's probably. I can't remember what he looks like actually, but it could it could be a C if it if it if it drapes long enough. <laughs> don't hate on me, man. Until you look on bench like me, don't hate on me. Like a thirty eight C. Anyway, you can I, catch me on I can Instagram. Pick you up over my head and throw you. You can catch me on Instagram. <laughs> On uh, aka Mr. Wolf on Twitter, on aka underscore Mr. Wolf, no Yoruba proverb this week. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, rodents and other small insects. Other small insects. I love that being and other small insects. What's what's your, um, what do you bench easy? Easy? Yeah, like 10 push out. 10 rips. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, 120, 130. Oh, because I was going to say, you should do a buck 20. I know that for sure. Mm. 2130. As I get older, it gets a bit more rough. But I was, the one I can do just a couple of reps is like 150. I've done 160. I don't. I don't go 160 anymore. I, I cannot try it because I, I don't ever have anybody spotting me. But when I did have somebody spot me, I did 160, and I was doing it easy actually. When I when I had somebody spotting me, because I, I didn't feel like um the pressure. I, I wish I could remember the weights I was doing. I was at Swifts the other day with my cousin. I was about to say, I was thinking, I was, you are going to tell you you're doing what I was doing. I was going to say, okay. I, yeah, gonna, <laughs> everything's a competition. You get me? Look at him. I was, I was, let me talk then. That's the, that's the, that's your problem. Okay. Instead of letting the person no, finish fine, fine. and then seeing what they're saying, it's like, I, I thought you were going to say something. I'll let you live, bro. But I was yeah, on, bro. I was on tenter hooks because oh, I, I already I, knew what you were going to say. Interesting. Like, oh. I want to know what you did. So let me see. So he's got, he's, he, uh, one of my cousins, he's got, um, what do you call it? Like an outhouse. Yeah. So he's got, he's got a, a gym. Um, a cinema room and a bar like in, in his in his garden basically in his mm. house and so um, I went under the what, what, what's it when bench, bench. bench press <laughs> so I, I went underneath it and I was and I struggled to do about two or three of whatever the weights are that on, he was doing uh, yeah that he had done there yeah they were under 
Okay. Right. I don't, so I don't, I'm going to message the missus. Maybe she remembers how much it was. Okay. Right? So was it one plate? No, it was two on each side. Two on each side? Yeah. They were, probably would have been tens or fifteens. So they would I think have, that, that ring, I think one was ten and one was fifteen. So then you was, if there's ten, one's ten and one's fifteen, that and a bar, yeah. if he's got a 20 bar, that's, uh, you did 70. So that's, that sounds, 70 is sounding about right. KG. So that's, so that's, so you're saying you do double that basically? I'm saying that I, I, I can sleep doing that. Okay. All right. Fine. But me, I was, I, 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 like I said, I could, I could have done more, but it was, it wasn't easy. So I stopped and I did but that. But it's, it's not supposed to be easy. That's the point. Yeah. But I'm not, okay. That's, that's the first le- lesson I ever learned when I was doing a uh, gym. That, that's that's supposed that, to be easy. No, that spurred me on though. I was, shout out Yemi OG. I was in the gym. Yemi OG was there. Yeah. And I was banging out. I think I was, had like two, I had like, um, I did, this was three uh, dumbbells. So I was doing dumbbell presses and I must have done like, I must have had like 30 on each side. This was years and years ago when I was starting. And I was, he was there with me and I was just doing them in tens. And it was just like, the fact you're just doing tens means it's too easy. Shouldn't be doing it. Like, what do you mean? He goes, if you're just doing it and there's no problem, then you're not, you're not, you're not doing it properly. And it's only when, when he said that to me because I was so in fear of obviously hurting yourself, blah, blah, blah. It kind of like took off my handbrake and I was like, you know what? You're right. So then I just, he was there. So I just started going up, 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 up. Then you just notice how much more you can actually do, mm. but you have to just do it in it. Yes. All right. If it's important to you or if, if for, for me, being healthy is not necessarily being able to push, push weight. No, no, mm, but I agree with that. But I, I always wanted to be able to carry my own body weight. So then that's why I started to get to a point where I needed to be able to do this or could do that, I could do that. And then I said, you know, what, I want to be able to bench my body weight. Mm. So at the time, I think I was about 120, 130 or something like that. Well, no, 120 I was at the time when I was doing that. So as I said, I have to learn how to push 120. So then. But carrying your, if you were had a, a, a what's in pull up bar, mm-hmm. you, could, you could have pulled yourself up at that point. So you could carry on weight from there. At that point. Or does that not count? Yeah, yeah. About that. There's a difference um, between pulling your weight up and, and pushing it. And yeah, and pushing it away from you. There's a difference. Uh, it's heavier to... It's, no, no it, it, I don't know because I think people find pull-ups much harder than doing the actual push-up. I, I mean, than doing a, um, a bench press. We were talking about this just today, wasn't it? How heavy would I be in kilos? About just... Average. By looking at you? Yeah, come on. Would I be I'm more than the 70? Yes. Oh, yeah, easily. You, I, don't, about, I don't know nothing about you'd weights. You'll be about so. 110, 150. No, I'll say about 110. I'm mm-hmm. 94. So yeah. I'll be... Okay, so yeah, you're, right. about uh, you're weird because you, you look weird. Oh, no, he's not 110. <laughs> huh? He's not 110. You're weird because you look no, weird. No, because if you look at him, he doesn't look he doesn't look that big, but he's big. Mm. I sometimes stab his big, and then the next week I see him, he's not big again. Mm. He's either like his clothes. It's my clothes, man. Some clothes, guy, like, you don't clothes, look big now. Some clothes make me. I am, I've got a fat belly and I have breasts, but my legs <laughs> are just. Um, uh, very, I think they're solid legs. They're not fat legs, and then same with my arms. Yeah, it's so just, my, it's just my torso. I think that you, but muscle weighs more than fat, so I don't know how much muscle you've got in your body. But I think you're probably about one ten. Fair dues. So 110. all right. So anyways, they, so there we go. It was, it was more than my weight. I mean, it was much less than my weight, and I was um, struggling to do more than a few. It's not that I couldn't do it, but I was struggling to do. It's like well, at least you tried anyway, Mr. Yeah, Wolf. I was just playing, but that's the thing. I was just playing, Mr. Wolf. What's yeah. your all time high on benching? Mm, back in the day, and recent, but 110. I'd say about 110. Go on, go on, Mr. Wolf. What, what, what about now? Because you go gym. Now, see, now what I do is like a weight based circuit training. So mm. I don't specifically work on upper, lower body. I work on everything at once. Mm, 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 so mm, mm, now mm. I'm very easily doing 80. 80, okay. 80 with a 10 uh, reps. So I know that I'll be able to do 100. So that's 20, 10, 10, yeah? And then bar. Yeah. I, I know that I'll be able to do 100, but I'm not sure how many reps I'll, okay. I'll, I'll be able to do. How, how much did that bar we at the house? That we 15. That no, bar, no, 10 even. That one was a 10 bar. Mm. Which one? The one that we used to have in the yard. I think the most I saw you do was about 90. 70, no, I did like, 100. Did you? Yeah. Mm. I did a hundred. Um, remember the time I nearly killed myself? I yeah. thought I was doing ninety. I didn't count the weight of the bar. Okay. So I had ninety on the weight. The bar's ten. That's why I asked you how much the bar was. Mm. And I think I did. Did it drop on your chest? I did eight reps. No, I wouldn't it drop on his chest. I would have been dead. Oh, you? No, you weren't spoiler. there. That's the same. Oh, you okay. weren't there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, like, I, I did. I did yeah, I nearly killed myself. I did. <laughs> I did. I think I got no, to. Nothing, you know. I got to five reps, and I was like, "Raw, this is not that bad. I can." Do tens and sometimes, sometimes it just goes. Yeah, and that's exactly me. what happened. Yeah. So basically, I went five, 
It's like, right, this one. Has... And then on six, we're like, oh, no, no, it was, six was fine. This, this is the joke. It's like five. I was like, oh, this is not as bad as I thought it was. Six, yep. Seven, yep. Eight. Eight. And you're stuck there, innit? What the fuck, eh? But it was like, it was almost at, um, at the top. It was, no, it was, almost, it was beyond halfway. It was almost at the top. So I was thinking, all right, if it gets hard, all I have to do is lock it into the bar and I'm done. Yeah? I couldn't get it to that little so piece. So you had to slide mm. underneath. That little piece to get it over. I couldn't get it over yeah. and it just came straight back down. And yeah, man, you had to- slide it out, man. Had to, yeah, bro, I had to roll it down my stomach and there was no power left afterwards. The, the, the thing, damn near dad. The thing I used to think that was quite, I, I was only, the, one of the most times I've ever been impressed with myself and I don't really get impressed with myself with gym stuff is that- um. During COVID, the first like, for the first couple of months, I didn't have a uh, a proper bench, um, like the bench with the bars on the side mm. to put your 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 actual bar on. Mm. So I had a bench, but I didn't have one that had the bars on the side. The rest bars. Yeah. So what I had to do, I had to basically deadlift, like so I I, I could and I had about a hundred um hundred and I think it was hundred and ten worth of maybe of of weights at home mm. until uh, I got my weights back from my sister. Shout her out. So I went back up to one thirty again. Anyway, that's not here no day. But anyway, so um. I had to basically def- dead. I had to stand up, deadlift first, yeah, whatever it was, the weight I was had. Then sit down, mm-hmm. then go back, and do then it. push up the thing and do it that way. Wow! And I had to say, "Well, I rate myself, you know, I can do this." That's when I knew that if you if you if you push yourself enough, you can do most things. Like there's some, I think there's meant to be like a metric that some that they use to say how much you can actually bench. Because I remember at one time I was in the gym, and the guy was like, "How much do you weigh?" I said, "I weigh this so and so." He goes, "Then you should be able to bench press so and so amount of much." And I'm like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "It's like a metric that they said that you should be able to do this, this, and this if you weigh about this, this, and that." What at max or just in just nominal? Max. I just think at max or just, okay. in, or just able to pre- bench press that, that what, much weight. What is the benefit in in benching heavy, heavy, heavy weights? You get stronger, isn't it, in the chest? You burn a lot of calories doing that. Okay, all right, do. The, the, but the calories that you burn more is when you do um, legs. So that actually is almost like a cardiovascular workout when you're doing legs. Depending, you know, on, depending on what you're doing. You know your legs are four times stronger than your abs. It depends on what you're doing as well. Yeah, leg press is not, that's just, that's a nonsense what I'm doing now. Because for me, when I, when I hear this stuff about the weights and whatnot, because I, I, I still haven't finished my story, but you remember that film with uh, Bruce Lee? Mm-hmm. And somebody's trying to impress him, and, and they're they're beating a, a board, and, and he said, and they're smashing boards. And board don't fight back. Boards, are, that's what I think when I see people like going mad with 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 the things. It's like for for like, but it's a, it's an achievement, isn't it? So if you can, yeah, but boards don't fight back. It's yeah, like, but are you talking about the the gym stuff still? Yeah, it's it's. Well, it's uh, not about fighting, is it? It's about you're trying yeah, to get. No, to your, he's it, trying to say that there's no reciprocation. Intricate, full, literal. It's, literal. it's like when the 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 metaphor boards don't fight back is that oh. you're doing all of this. But okay, I don't get the metaphor. So explain it to me. I, well, the reason I asked, what is it doing for you? And you said it's making you stronger. And because for me, the gym, there's two reasons why I would go to the gym or mm-hmm. work work out. One is is to get fitter, and then the other one is to look better. Those are the two reasons. Um, I guess the fir- the a byproduct of that would be to get stronger. I guess mm. and, and to, and to uh, look better. Yeah, not not everyone that looks strong looks good. Mm. You said a, a by a byproduct or of what? Of uh, like bench pressing and weights, and there's a lot of people that you that don't look. Not everyone. Not that video that I, I sent you. <laughs> which one? The one I said earlier today. Oh, with the woman. The, I'm, no, ass, I'm assuming. Okay, okay. Sorry, so I'm talking about guys because you were talking about yourself. Yeah, but even guys, so, there's some with no neck brothers that just look like they're just stiff. I get yeah, that. I, I don't like overly. Yeah, I, I don't, don't want to do overly um henchy. I get that, but I think that if you do um an equal amount throughout your body and you do it consistently and you do it well then you will in the eyes of some I'll say this in inverted commas look better yeah but there's some that's got big big legs big big arms big big shoulders and they just look stiff I get that but I'm just talking about equally and done in a certain way that doesn't look mad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You're talking different things. You're, he's, you're, he's, you're yeah, but when he kept on saying, when he kept on saying equally, that's what I was thinking. It doesn't make. Or, 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 I assume you meant equally, like legs and shoulders and arms and everything like that. Yeah, it's like like people do just upper body and they want. Yeah, that's what I was saying to you. That is, that's what that's why I use that example of they, there's still people that do everything equally, but they I do too excessive and they just look mad. Okay. Well, then, I'm yeah, assuming. but you're going to the extreme as as usual. No, there's no. Well, I don't see it as an extreme because I see so many of them. So, all right. Back to my story. I think I'm a secure man. I, d- I don't really um, worry too tough about other men. Like, in, uh, cause I feel that, uh, because I put 
more weight on my intelligence. <laughs> well, and, I, I, and, I didn't laugh my head. And what do you mean? Because you said the word weight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I put more weight on my intelligence mm. and my um my skills as a as an artistic kind of person mm. and a personable person I can talk and all that stuff. That's where I I hold my um like I don't what's, what's, what would you say like that's that's where I hold myself your, your values like, yeah kind of thing so it's cool my my physic physicality mm. is not is not where I, is not where I put it's not that I have nothing it's not that it means nothing to me but it's not where the most of it is which is why I guess I can be fat and still be happy with, and still look at myself and be like yeah but I don't I'm, I'm still a legend I don't think not, I put my like a, I'm I go to the gym regularly well, and do all of this type of what's stuff what's I got to do for what I'm saying and I don't yeah because I, 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 we were talking about gym stuff so I'm assuming that you're you was a, okay, you're sorry, a super sorry, kid sorry just say what you're saying man. I just, <laughs> you're a super I'm, trying, I'm trying to have a conversation with you so but it's I'm fine. trying to tell you a story if somebody's trying <laughs> to tell you a story you, let them, you can let them finish and then say what you're no, saying I'm not saying what you're saying but it could because it's where, it, it's where the conversation stemmed from. That's why I was I was going. I'm waiting way. for him to finish. That. You know the way it stems from. Though. That's the point because I haven't finished my story. Well, it's, it clearly stems from this conversation that we was having about Karen. Anyway. No, it's, uh, I was I started the story. Everybody's interrupted, which is fine. We're having a conversation, but I haven't finished my story. Okay, so, so, it's, so it's, finish it's, your your story. So so like like I said, I was lifting the weights. Mm-hmm. I only did a couple. I struggled. I put it down. There's a is a, a family affair. A bunch of family members were there. So, so you shamed everyone. And um, sorry, you say you shamed yourself in front of family. Members. No, 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 because it, it wasn't an issue <laughs> at that point. <laughs> then my my younger cousin's husband sat down, and then done it easily. Uh, forget easy. It's like he was picking up a toothpick, and he did it. <laughs> He did about fifteen of them, and, 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 did, did another, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, that, that's cool." Now he's hench. He, he he does sports. He's he's a he's a he, he does that's what he does anyway. Like that's part of his mm-hmm. his 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 route. His he's, regime. He's can, gym, we, can, can we pause? Yeah, I want you, you all to know that this person, yeah, was that guy now. Yes. So you um, it here. the reason I mentioned Sabotage, my security. Yeah. And how I don't usually like, stuff like that wouldn't normally bother me, but mm. my missus was there, and and when I and I thought, and I thought you know what, because she was there and gig, she was gig, watching, yeah, she was giggling away, and I thought <laughs> you know what, I've, I haven't felt before where it's like, nah, I didn't feel manly enough, you know, like that that like <laughs> did you sit I, back I, that I, moment, I, did you sit I, back I, that? I, 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 that no 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 sit no, no. Back because down, because end of the day is <laughs> end of the day. For me to have sat down and carried on whatever, it would be to try and prove a point. And it, it was hard for me. I would have to work, work my way up to doing that thing. So oh, even, whether, you, whether you see it as, as nothing and that's a minor, for me, clearly it's not No, minor. I don't think it's a minor because I think that people... All right, when I, when, when, when um, people, whenever I talk about weights and stuff, like even about my missus that she'll talk about, oh, maybe I should be able to carry this. I always say to somebody, because as we all are, we're all Africans here, we're all Nigerians here, we've all seen big bags of rice, big bags of this, big bags of that, yeah? So that, thing that you was pick, picking up was uh, uh, in our house we buy uh, uh, grand rice yeah yeah and you, oh, you let's even say the rice yeah, 5 kg uh, no 5 kg you talk about 5 kg that big one that, that, 15 that, 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 that um, golden tolly boy big okay, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, that's about 20 there's, they have different sizes isn't it the big one I think there's 20 or well, the one that we buy I think is like 20 or, or, or 40 right maybe I don't know either not one four, or two but then it's 20 then mm, right okay carry on now so what you actually was picking up was three of those and a, and a bit Right. But when you but people don't see that they don't think of it like that. But that's what you was carrying. Now if you was to ask somebody to go and carry all of that rice, now they'll be looking at you. How can I carry all that rice? But you did it. So I always say that it's if people are like nee, it's not it's not a small thing that you're just carrying there. It's not small. Yeah, but you, you just said that I, I do more than two two times. Yeah, that. but he he he's in practice. So that's this is my point. I don't practice. I I don't go gym. I don't work out. I don't do any exercise at mm. all. So so I don't do any of that stuff. I'm not I'm not um, gym shaming you at all. I think that you should. I, I think that's the fact that you even just went and just done it. I think it's good. I always yeah, said I did it for. I was doing it for like just to, just. For yeah, the set. You, I wasn't doing did. it to, like to work out. I was just doing it. To, yeah, but you just um, did. You just you went know. and did it. So I'm, I'm for that. I'm, I still think it's a good thing you tried anyway. I think that's a bit cut. Like no, said. it's not because I, it's not. No, what, what I think he's saying, correct me if I'm wrong. Stop me if I'm wrong. Stop me if I'm is, wrong. Is that what you did push out was impressive? You didn't take, nonetheless. Did you put it on? No, no, it was just there. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Most people would take off and then try and do it and then maybe put something else. On. I didn't even know how heavy it was. You just that's, sat down and did it. That's the point. I didn't a man know how trying heavy to be unbreakable out here. Well, the question <laughs> I'm asking is, uh, Dad, what, can you, you can do more. You felt a bit overweight, yeah. 
Do you know what oh, oh, the, the types of things that I would have felt away? Like if if you're in, if you go, you know when you go to bed and you're getting into bed with your missus. You know when you watch the programs and all them things and they get everyone's suddenly. Uh, couples are getting to bed at the same time, right? So they're getting into bed, blah blah, and you, you, maybe she's um, creaming herself before she goes to sleep or something. Because you know, um, did you see when what's his name was pushing those those, those bench presses? And you just be looking at them and side of her like, mm, I saw it. That's the type of thing when that's the only type of time when I might feel away. If mm. she just said it, if she was just watching the thing, I don't think I'm thinking a way about it. No, it's nothing to do with that's a lie. With thing. with let me not say it's nothing to do with her because obviously it's good. if she wasn't there, it wouldn't mean anything. No, even if she was, yeah, if even if she wasn't there, it was because I never or had it, the last time I actually went to the gym was before I got married. Mm. I did working out before I got married, so that's it would be six years um, in a in a few months. Wow. So is so so it was six months. It's six years because okay. it was before I got married, not at the time. So six years ago was the last time I went to the gym, and I was doing a little bit and bub to lose some weight, which I, and I lost the weight uh, for that matter. So that's the last time I see. It. I'm not in competition with people. I don't see this thing. It's not something that is 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 part of my world. So to sit there and do it, and then for somebody else just to do it like with, like it's nothing, then that properly shows. Oh, this is like you are just on a whole separate flex. Then then because it's just not in my head. Gym is is a funny place because when you go to gym, I don't know about um you, Mister Wolf, if you notice, like there will be people watching you, man. You'll be you'll be surprised. You'll just be you'll sit I'm down, be you blah watch. blah, and you just see people in the corner of their eye watching to see whether or not you can achieve that thing. Whether or not they've got bad intentions or good intentions, mm, I can never tell mm, you. Mm, 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 but mm. there'll be times when you do something and the person will be like, you see a head nod, they'll be like, mm, yeah, yeah, you did it. Like, yeah. They can see that you've been struggling with because it. Because people that are in the gym, especially if they're, they're gym bods, mm. it's that stuff is important to them. Yeah, yeah. So, like you said, it's either they see you as a competition and they probably want you to fail. They, they maybe they don't want you to fail, but they just want to be better than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's be, let's be diplomatic and be nice about it. Yeah, they want to be better than you. So when they see you not do it, it's like yes, I, I can do it. And they can't. Yeah. As opposed to they can't do it. Good, they can't do it. And and then you have the other person where it's like, go on, my son, kidding me. Go on, go on. Yeah. Yes. Like yeah. You yeah. you tend like you tend to build up a. I don't know, it's like a gym community, isn't it? Mm. Like, I like to go late, late at night when it's practically empty, when there's barely anybody in there because I like to do the circuit. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll either go late at night or really early in the morning. And even at those times, there's the same people that yeah, are in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get me? And then, you know, you just say hello or you spud or, you know. Mm. And then you, for me, I like to encourage people. So when they're there pressing, I'm like, come on, man, come on. Light work, light work. You might just ha- have somebody say that to you as you're walking by, or you might say that to the to the person who's pumping their weights or doing a little bench press or whatever. Light work, light work. Get it done, get it done. And they may ask you to uh, to, to spot them. Yeah, man, and, yeah. you know, so you get that in the gym. I don't really see people having that kind of uh, antagonizing or a bad mind mentality yeah, when, I don't when, think they're going to say I think the bad man people would probably doing it from afar probably yeah. probably you know what I, mean? I, just said, but, I don't but, know what their intentions are you just you know but they, you can see them like watching you from the side I, and, and and people watch yeah. all the time like bad like, man people stay far so, so, so when women say that they, they want a woman's only gym stay or they don't like going to gym because men is watching them are you the type, would you think well everybody gets watched everybody no. gets watched no, in, in, in my opinion I mean like I know a friend of mine, shout out to you, you know who you are, yeah? She was in the gym now and her daughter just happened to call her on the phone, yeah? And whilst her daughter, it was a video call and her daughter could see the other side behind her, innit? And while she was on the phone, she was like, mom, look, look, look. Like there was two guys. There was one guy that was obvious, he looked at her. And then there was another guy further on, he was looking. And not looking at the back or the shoulders, looking at the back back. He gave me super. You get me? So it's sometimes, like I said, it's by default that we may do that. Mm. You know what I mean? To women, especially, I won't lie, like there's a woman that's in the gym. Sometimes I might just look at her. It's not in a way that, oh my God, I want to take your pants but you, off. You, but, might, but you might still look at that woman outside of the gym anyway. I might look at her outside of the gym anyway, but... You know, some women feel uncomfortable because maybe they're dressed in a certain way yeah. in the gym and they have to dress in a certain way because they're in the gym and they will get looks outside of the gym, but probably more so when they're in the gym. And it's them subconscious ones. It's the ones where you might not want to look, but it's almost like you just can't help but look. Even I mean, You even look at man. 
So, yeah, so yeah, you might be resting, and then you just your eyes are just just there. That, that's my point. If if everybody looks at everybody, no, but is it different with girls because they don't just look? I think the thing with girls as well is that women, oh, whatever, right? Is that they will then. <laughs> They might want to then try and chat to them or try to say, oh, you're not doing this right. Or, you know, do you want me to give you some advice? Or That's different. Blah, blah, blah. But it's that, that, along, that comes alongside. That men don't usually get that. Men don't get that. Like, and my friend was getting that as well. Yeah, you don't necessarily get the, oh, you, you know what, let me show you how to do this, blah, blah, blah. Even if, even I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if, I think if, I've had that, actually. Okay. Well, well, that's, the, 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 you must have been very bad. I, cause maybe bad, maybe you was dangerous. Or maybe you was somebody that actually works in the gym as well and it was just trying to show I you the know, equipment. But I, I can recall somebody um, coming and saying, Something I can't. Remember you might have been doing something dangerous, which I, I think if somebody's doing something dangerous, they would a man will turn over. But they, I think we've. I've had that. With, yeah, if you're doing something dangerous, then yeah, Maybe of course stuff it's like you need to bend your knees, like yeah, not your back or so something like that. I don't know, whatever. But I'm talking like men will come and say, "Ah, oh, you know, you need some assistance." We say, "Miss," blah blah blah, and then it will be like, <laughs> and not even just sometimes there might not even be a case that they. Well, it's most of the time they're trying to chat to you, but it's also can be seen as condescending. Mm. Like mm-hmm, these women have been going to gym mm-hmm. all this time. You you just bought a small boys come to tell me what I need to be doing and what I don't need to be doing. You that can't even uh, do legs yourself because you never do it. You're mm. telling me how to do legs. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's a bit different for men and women. I, again, I do f- agree with uh, Mr. Wolf and even Stav, you were saying it. That people stare at everyone in the gym, but w- women get stared at. Mm. Men get looked at. They Women get stared at and they'll, you can see them looking at their breast or the bum mm. and, and the blah, blah, blah. And the there's, there's this meme uh, with uh, Samuel L. Jackson in it where it basically says how men look like when they looking at you yeah. in the gym and Black, how Black they Saint actually Moore. and how they actually look like when they're looking at you in the gym so yeah. you know you think that you're some sweet boy when you're looking but in reality you look like a perv yeah so it's not a case of um I think I think they've got a, a, a justified case to be a, a, you know saying that they want a woman's only gym but I would be interested to see how that woman only gym works though. There, there, there are women's only gym and yeah, no. yeah even yeah. even the one I used to go to they had like a uh, look, their own little gym in why, the back. Why, what's the, what would be so interesting? What's going to be the difference? I just want to know if they feel if they feel more comfortable there, or of course they're comfortable. But, 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 no, 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 not necessarily. Exactly, because even women have this, and men have this issue when they when they're in the shower. You understand, like they don't want to be seen naked in front of other women, or they may feel away being naked in front of uh, uh, people that they don't know. And you some, know, so. and yeah, and some people they don't like that type of stuff. They're like, you know what? I'm, I, I would like to see more. I like. I don't like the fact that I don't see guys there, and don't think that women don't look at men in the gym as well. You know. Yeah, man. They look. Don't they don't get that confused. You see women looking at men in the everybody gym. Everybody looks at everybody. They look at the nuts, bro. Oh, wow. I didn't know about that. Whoa, good you, grief! They do. <laughs> you went the you nuts. Know. Wow. Yeah, they they you know they that's what they look at. Wow. Uh, anyway, that's yeah. a bit weird. A lot of gym. How is that weird? That's a lot of gym. Because you're in the gym and you're looking at nuts. Yeah, because yes. you're wearing tight. Tra- um, you know, um, you might be wearing shorts. shorts or like a tighter trouser. Some of them might wear leotard as well. <laughs> ah, I say yeah. tight, tighter trouser. You know, like like, like man, his chinos. Man, do <laughs> <laughs> listen. I've seen people wearing jeans, Air Force One. Listen, the Air Force One gym, but uh, people are the one that I make. I think are the most funny. Like you, you know they're not going for cardio. As soon as you see somebody there, white air forces are like you're not coming. Here nah, cardio. them man are not the funny ones. Is that women it's, or men you're talking about? Men. It's 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 the it's it's the boxers in it. It's when they're in the gym and then they lift up their they lift up their top to look at their six pack in the mirror <laughs> and then they do shadow boxing. <laughs> I don't really see many boxers. <laughs> I see a lot of people do skip. Like I'm in envy when I watch certain people in the gym. Like there's some guys that go in there and they can do all of the um the things like where they can handstand on their and their hands and and stuff like that. And I think I think I wish I could do that. Like I, the one thing I wish I could or still maybe do. Maybe you can if you try. Yeah, maybe I can if I try. If you can bench one twenty, then you should be able to do that. What? Stand on my Bruv, no, 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 no. Benching takes um, brute force. Yeah, this is yeah, finesse. Handstand, yeah, finesse and grace. And we've already yeah. said and that. Know, this, and I can't be straight like that. <laughs> like I, I, the thing that I've always wanted to do, That's and, all I, yoga and, and stuff, I still anyway. can't do, and I, it's really annoying that I can't do it. And I know I can probably do it. And some guy in the gym again tried to teach me how to do it, and at the time I just couldn't do it. Tell us what it is. I can't do a muscle up. A muscle up. So that's when you do a pull up and then you with, go with, over the top. Oh, that. And then you push yourself that's, up. That's proper calisthenics, man. Yeah, my, you know? I don't, I can't get the swing properly. I don't know how to do the swing properly. So when I see people do that, I blatantly envy them. I'm like, I wish I could. How do about that. the video that, that we saw in the group today where they done, where the lady was doing a pull up with a, like a hanging knee raise and she was kind of. Yeah, I can do that. 
she was jumping almost. The jumping one I can do, but not that as many as her. But the thing I can't do is where she had one hand on the on the uh, the bar and one hand on the side. I can't do that. Yeah, no way. That's all torso business, mate. I, tr- I one time in the belly. I one time I tried to do the one handed pull up and I could do like maybe two. But yeah, I had to support my other hand with my hand. That's but how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, yeah, but I could do like two. But then um, I just thought to myself, I'm gonna mess up my wrist. And I'm like, if I know I'm gonna hurt myself doing something stupid, I just don't do it. Anymore. You know what? I, that one handed one I could do when I was younger. Without I never, I've never been a gym person, but that one handed one I used to be able to do at a younger age. I used to just be a, used to eat soup. Yeah, one hand, whoop, 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 all the time. It's one hand press up, same thing. Three finger press up, same thing. Mm. I think I got to two finger press ups at one point. I, I never tried it because I don't want to mess up my fingers. That's how I was like these types of things. I'm like I'm not gonna mess. I used to watch that Bruce Lee in it. Mm. So. Have you ever checked your resting heartbeat? Yeah, of course I do it on the time. And what is it? It's about sixty something. Does your watch tell you? Yeah, I can do it now if you want. Yeah, it's over that man. Like your resting heartbeat kind of determines how good an athlete you could be. And what the lower it is, the better it is. Mm. Yeah. Apparently, I've got an athletics one. Of course, oh, my battery's dying. How, how, how much is yours? <laughs> it's like fifty-four, or something like that. That's low, low. Yeah, because I yeah. think mine was uh, fifty-four, between fifty-nine and sixty-four. Yeah, that that is in the region of of athletic, you know. So um, yeah, I remember doing <clears throat> sixty-four. Blood, blood, hmm? Sixty-four. Mm. Was, was yours 64 a, as well? It measured me eight minutes ago. Six, it was 64. Resting mm. heart. And I was, yeah? I was just chilling here. So, how are you with that? 65, yeah. Nothing measures me like every, I don't know, 20 minutes or whatever. Mm. That's good, man. So, yeah. You know, things like um, uh, blood pressure. Mm. Low blood pressure is really important. You know, the types of food that we eat can determine um, how low or how, how high your blood pressure is. What's your max on the heartbeats? What's the max you've ever seen yours do? Oh. I think I've done 172. I've seen 179. And, and that is high. I've seen like there, there is a certain level of, or there's a certain of uh, beats per minute that your heart is supposed to do when, when you're working out. It will determine it by your age. Yeah. So at my age, I think the maximum. At, at your age. At your age. The maximum is 164, 165. And you are said 172. And I went to 172. So that's a bad thing. It's not because that is me pushing myself to the extreme. So that enables my resting heartbeat to be as low as it is. It, you know, just makes me as fit as I, this, like if, if if you're doing something like combat sports or you're doing something like uh, boxing or Muay Thai, which I used to do, you're getting pushed that far. So the, your endurance level is, um, is as strong as possible. I hate 179 football. Uh, yeah. Football five aside, one seven nine. Um, it surprised me. I was I was scared actually because I was thinking, boy, that's like brr, 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 yeah. brr, that's a lot of heartbeats. So boy. so the idea is is how long does it stay that high? Yeah, and then how quickly does, does it, it come, come down? down? Yeah, I never yeah. get me. To be honest. So so if if you're one seventy nine and then it takes five minutes to get to one sixty, then there's a problem. There's a problem. Yeah, you, you get me. And My the team idea, drops off quick though, and that shows how um, good your cardiovascular fitness is, and and cardiovascular fitness is the most important aspect when it comes to gymming. You know what I mean? You can look strong, you can, you know, do as much weights as you can and what have you, but your cardiovascular fitness is really, really important. If your system now spin, then it now spin. Because everything works through your heart and your brain. Yeah, I do a lot more cardio now. Like, I'm I'm actually quite impressed now. I go to the treadmill when I just, before when I used to run, I couldn't even run maybe five minutes without maybe stopping. Now I'm just running, but I, I, I stop because I want to, not because mm. I have to. But that's because when the lockdown was happening, I was running. Mm, yeah, you said, didn't it? That's how I mashed up my ankle, but or my foot or whatever it was, but I was running. So now I'm, I'm, I like cross trainer. That's the one I like the most. Mm, I, I took my son out to do um, some really uh, tough fitness drills and um, we done some sprint drills. Well, he done some sprint drills. I was trying to get him to do sprint drills. Bleak test ones. You want, not even that. Yeah. Sprinting. Okay. Like hardcore, heavy sprint as fast and as hard as you can and no shuttle runs. I was, I, I was, I was all timing him and I was thinking, you know, when you can tell that, listen, you're not giving everything. Here, like, you're not you giving know, your all. Yeah. Like you're wasting people's time. It's cold out here. You're supposed to be sprinting as hard as you can. You've done it again. And I like looked in, you know, I was ready to arms him up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are we doing out here? Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Like, 
you want me to push you and you're not pushing yourself. Yeah. So obviously I took off my jacket in it. Mm. And I said, if I do this quicker than you, then there's a problem. Mm. I did it quicker than him in it. Yeah. Like, there's no way that big old daddy is supposed to be spinning that much as quick as, uh, quicker than you. So obviously, you know, I got in his face and yeah, man, the boy did one hard, hard. But let me tell you something. You see sprint did you, drills? Did you beat him? Was he, nah, was he a lot quicker than you after that? He was a lot quicker. Okay. It's, like it's all in the head, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get me? Yeah, that can't be beating you. No, nah, yeah. listen, man. Yeah, that can't be beating you. The man there can... And you're meant to be athlete. That's what I'm saying. There you know a, what I mean? There was a time where my dad used to tear us, all of us. Your dad's very, very tall. He used to tear and the range, us. And he's got like, very, very long legs. He used to run fast. There was a time mm. where he tore us. Like, we were teenagers. On your mask, get set. Man was gone. Yeah. And it was like, these are men that are just started running from the police. You know what I'm saying to you? <laughs> them, them kind of cousins that like, just started police, running from the police. Police, police. They're like, yeah, police, you're not going to catch me. You're not going to catch He was gone. I said, nah, this is long. You know what? Going off that topic, yeah. Can you remember the first time that you saw your dad do something like like athletic or something like a young person does? Because I remember the first time that my uh, my dad must have got us a bike. All right. And um, <laughs> my dad got us a bike. And he wanted to show us the bike, so he went. He was wearing his full suit, and he, he was riding. He was riding the bike around the estate. And I was looking to myself. I've never seen. I didn't, I didn't even think my dad could ride a bike. Uh, yeah, but yeah. he was riding it in his full suit around the estate. And I'm like, wow. I didn't know my dad could ride. I never bike. seen anything like that. But and I saw him chase one one you to slap him up one time as well. Yeah, yeah. See, is that when he said you smiled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was smiled. <laughs> it's similar to that. This is when I like, I looked at my dad as probably the only time I looked at my dad as some kind of a hero like go on dad you know what I mean and this was uh, like the first real time that the family or that I can remember actually as a kid encountered extreme racism okay you get me so we lived in a estate in Battersea um, Ethelberger estate it was back then mm. you know what I mean I don't mind saying it now and yeah there were, we encountered racism a lot like there was a family or a couple of families that really gave us some some problems. And I remember coming back one time and, you know, there was a brick through through the uh, kitchen window. Oh, God. And I remember my dad taking that brick going round for a little while. I was like, wow, where's he going? Mm. And And then he came back. So I'm assuming the brick was gone. He must have threw it through, through their window. Mm. And there was another time when I think they must have blocked us in. Mm. And he got out and they and they were fighting. I was thinking, yeah, my dad beat him up. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, and you know, it, when you see your father, your dad there defending the family, mm. you get me? Defend, mm. Defending the family and, you know, and you could, as a child, you're looking at your father, you're thinking, is my dad going to beat this guy or is this guy going to beat my dad? You know, and my mum's my there screaming and shouting and blah, blah. And yeah, my dad, like, you know, he threw some hands, man. He threw some hands. Sports day. My dad came to sports day. Let them have it, blood. Let them have it. That was the first time that I see him do a thing. That was when we, that was when I found out that he could run. But sports day, you let them have it, but tearing up all the parents. That's 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 the thing. When you guys mentioned it many many episodes ago, you know, it's fifty to hundred episodes ago, you mentioned something about um, sports day that I'm gonna have to experience that with my kids. Yeah. And I, I never thought of it before. Yeah. And I'm at, like I said, I'm out of shape, and I, because I don't put no credence on it, it's like yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm. But then I thought I don't embarrass my, myself. That's it. I'm, I'm, embarrass I'm, that's it. Embarrass myself and my child. I'm like, oh no, I might need to do something. I forgot about it, but I need to remember now because it's, it's going to be coming up to them kind of time soon. Have yeah. you have you done the sports day? Yeah, I've, yeah. Done, I've done sports day at nursery. Like the uh, sprint race? Yeah, I had to do the sprint. At the Did sp- you win? Sports day right. at nursery. Um, one year I came out just on top. Um, the next year I didn't even bother because there were more, this is another thing, yeah? There were more mothers than there were fathers at the sports day. So then I'm racing against mums mm. thank god for jamaicans and <laughs> you're so oh, bad fucking <laughs> hell I'm, I'm just checking about this thing boy disrespect but um yeah there's more mums than there were fathers so then it just becomes mm. on on my one i remember like there was a lot of young dads bro. Mm, that's what i'm saying to you you get me so 
like the last one that I'd done, one of them was a flipping sprint champion as as a youth, okay. six foot four, yeah, yeah, built, yeah, you know what I mean. And then there was a few other ones, you know, six foot five, eleven, all taller than me, obviously. And I, I must have came about fifth, yeah, yeah. fifth out of. Did the man say they're all taller than me? Obviously, <laughs> all of them. They they were all sky high, bruv. Bro, we, can't, all, we can't mock him for being short all the time. And and yeah, hey, no, no. Go on, go on. Then. They were all sky Just high, sky. all all five eleven, all six foot plus, man. You know what I mean? And they were all like twenty five. Yeah, yeah. I hear you know that. what I mean? Like, I give me. But then the following year, they did a. Uh, they were all in prison. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> They did a 40s plus in it, you know okay. what I mean? And I won that, man, you know? So I was happy. Apparently, on Tuesday, my highest BPM is was 207. Jesus. What the hell? I was playing football at the time. Yeah, yeah, I know, but Jesus. Bro, that's, that's, um, that's mega, isn't it? Yeah. Let, let me find the... What's your resting? What's your lowest resting? Let me, let me, let me find the chart. Sta- that's concerning, bro. Stav's lowest resting was 46. 64, but that's no. my resting heart rate. My 46? Heart, my yeah, heart yeah. My, um, no, right my, now, it was 46. No, my lowest is not 46. That's, that's, not, that's not my lowest. They said that's your average resting heart rate. Though. Oh, okay. 60, okay. 60. I've, I've, sent, I've sent a screenshot to the, to the WhatsApp group of my highest and lowest in the past. Well, since I got this watch. So I've had this watch about six months or so. You said December 28th. My last, my last, my, like this week, the lowest I've had is 51. Okay. Like I did 51 today at some point. So yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know what I mean, highest today I had was 130. Because my brother's clearly fitter than me. So I don't know. Doesn't it's mean about, anything. so it's about your heart's range, isn't it? Your, your heart's, um, operating range. So if it, if, when you're resting, if the lower the heart rate is, means that your heart doesn't have to do a lot of work to push the blood around your body. And if the heart doesn't have to do a lot of work to push the blood around the body, it means that your arteries and your vessels are uh, potentially um, fairly unobstructed. So the flow is easier. Mm. When your heart has to work harder and pump more. When you're not doing anything. When you're not doing anything is because things were happening is really strange. So it shouldn't be too high when you're when you're working out as well. Just, oh, the lower the better as well when you're working out. No, no when you're working out the burn the yeah. calories your heart has to beat. Yeah. yeah. The workout so on the other end when you're working out, you want that increase or higher um, pump rate because it also means that it's carrying oxygen around your blood a lot better as well. Yeah. All of this stuff is sixes and sevens to me. I read an article this week, yeah? Mm. In Bloomberg. Um about it's called How London's Property Boom Left Black Black Britons with Nothing. Oh, yeah, I saw that. You saw that, yeah? I, I didn't read it though. Apparently, mm. the median um, uh, household uh, inheritance for blacks in the UK, in Britain, is zero. Yeah, I saw that. Did, did, did you send that to, to the thing? Or did, I just saw it, it was online, that. probably. You saw it. But I don't know if I agree with that because I don't know if... Well, certain people are disclosing what they're leaving. All right, hang on. Um, give me some volume there. Let me just play the audio clip quickly. Piece of it, not all of it. Still a little. Nah, you ain't got me. You ain't got me. Can you just talk first? When we say black families have zero wealth and prosperity, yeah, break down exactly no. what that yeah. means. Yeah, sure. So the Office for National Statistics, the best measure that they use is the median. So that means if you take the middle value of um, each group and how much wealth they own for black people, according to latest figures, they were the only group where it was for zero. Whereas, for example, for white British people, it was around £115,000. They're using that basically to to use, to measure one way of getting the average of how much property wealth um, different groups own. Olivia, you write in your piece that nowhere is the divide starker than in London, where almost 60% of black people in England and Wales reside and living costs eat up the potential for any savings. Uh, apart from this just being a very expensive part of the country to, to live in, why is this worse in London? Well, for one thing, I think the pay gap is actually sig- significantly worse in London. But then also, I think, as you mentioned, the vast majority of black people do live in the capital. And then property prices have really just taken off in a way um, over the past 20 th- years or so, which basically means that now if you're trying to get onto the property ladder, um, I think the average deposit at the beginning of the year for a first time buyer was £100,000, which could buy you wow. a house in other parts of the country. So it's just it's just a really big ask for anyone, no matter, you know, kind of who you are. Olivia, can you just talk about Notting Hill? Because place. I know so you use that as an example in the story of exactly what it is that you're talking about. 
So Notting Hill's a really interesting place in that historically it's very, very important, specifically for the Black Caribbean community, because when they started coming over in the 60s, that was one of the only areas they were actually allowed to live. And there were a lot of kind of people who didn't have a lot of money, who were forced to live there, and housing conditions were really bad. But a lot of these houses, in essence, were actually really big homes, which had been sliced up into pieces. And over time, when they started um, being less neglected, and when it started coming to kind of international tension, with, even with things like the film Notting Hill, it suddenly kind of picked up and it just massively accelerated in terms of price increases in terms of the type of people who were coming in until now the only real sign of the history that there used to be or one of them is the notting hill carnival when the area completely transforms but the rest of the time it's very very different to what it was when we go back to the 1960s so with this thing um <clears throat> i wanted to ask a question about how you man feel about uh inheritance inherited wealth um but as Black Britons in, uh, in the UK. Uh, interesting. I was just having a conversation about this last night, actually, at work with, with, a, with a few buds. Mm. So I finished work and, and we all congregating and we were talking. They were all smoking. It was freezing outside, but because they were smoking, I stand out there like a, like a, like a, like a dummy. And, um, all of them were talking about, uh, crypto trading. Yeah. And everybody was talking about how much money they've lost recently, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was buy the dip, buy the dip in it, buy the dip. Uh, but um, beyond that, we got into conversation about where we had, uh, what we have, what we're gonna pass down to our children. A lot of us have children around the same age, same age as yeah. us, yeah. And um, none of us were uh, British white, yeah, yeah. So we we're, were ethnics of, of some way, shape, or form. None of our parents were born in this country, yeah. So I got to the point where I was, I was discussing that, um, my parents are getting to the point now where they're passing down some money in, in, in my direction and what I'm doing with, with my children. Mm. And this may be a side issue to what you just asked, yeah. but it's in my head and it's, it's something I was going to talk about anyway. And it does bring it off. So if I do veer off or if I veer off, by all means, please bring it back to the, yeah. to the actual point when yeah. I'm done. It got to the point where I was talking about. They say I spoil my, my child. Mm. So the, a couple of the men were quite adamant. From what you just told me now, you sp- you're spoiling your child. Mm. And I'm like, mm, yeah, but I can't bring her up the same way that I was brought up because I don't have the same issues that my parents had. I, I can I can buy her what I want to buy her. For me to tell her no, it's because I'm just telling her no for the sake of telling her no. It's mm-hmm. not, it's, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. It's not that I, I never do it. But I, I, can't, I really have to just, well, I'm telling you no because I just don't want you to, to have it. Not because... I. Like, I can't, it's like I have to find a reason to not give it to you mm. there's space in the house you know I have no problem with you having a toy I just, you just can't have everything mm. which is fair but they didn't like how much I did get her because both of them I'm gonna it's, it's split into a free person conversation both of them have children who are four same age as mine and they both said they wouldn't do none of the stuff I'm doing you're just four yeah should be five very soon yeah None of them, are, like, I wouldn't do all of this. I wouldn't do all of that. Blah, blah, blah. And they started mocking me. I bet you buy ice cream all the time. All that stuff, blah, blah. And then I said, well, the difference with, with me and you, it seems. In fact, one person gave me Only an example. Four. Huh? Only four. What do you want us to be? Because I, 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 I keep assuming that she's five. Go on, six. <laughs> no, no. Go on. Uh, your daughter's five. Go on, no, six. Isn't it? My yeah. daughter's just turned six, yeah. yeah. We haven't said the story on the podcast about the food, you know. We have to, we have to make yeah, it. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That was a good one. Um, because it's, it's just serendipity because she doesn't even usually, it's not often that she eats that. Is it? Nah, it's, uh, it's once every couple of months. Oh, that was good, man. Yeah, it, was good, it was a good, it was a good one. That she does. So when I left today, she was chewing bone and, and eating the marrow out of the bone. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking the marrow out of the bone, you know, for you. <laughs> She's a true African sometimes. All right. So. One of them gave an example of he gives his children. I, I mentioned that I give my child pocket money, and I think she's pre- pretty young for pocket money. Um, but the other one said I give my seven and my four year old pocket money, but they have to do their chores. Okay, and I give them the pocket money, and I said I'm, I wouldn't do that to my, my daughter. She's gonna have to do her chores, whatever they may be. She's only four; she doesn't have chores. Just tidy up her toys and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But the money's got nothing to do with that. For me, I bought her a, a piggy bank, and I've told her. I've, I've said it on the podcast before, so if, if I'm repeating myself, sorry if you, if you haven't heard it before. Where I've told her you, we can go to the, the first time I did it. I got her the piggy bank and I said and I gave her money mm. and I, and she knows what money is. She she knows that that much. So I said we can go to the shop and buy you sweets. And she's like yeah yeah cool. She loves her food. She loves her sweets. I said or you can buy the toy, the big toy. Well, that's 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 what I call it, the big toy, which is the one that she really wants. 
and but you're going to need to save this money. What's saving? Money, you have to put it in this piggy bank and then you're going to have to keep adding more money to it until you can afford to buy this thing. Mm-hmm. And she said, how long, how long is that? I said, it's going to take a long, long, long time. Mm. Or we can go to the shop right now. Put your shoes on. We'll go to the shop right now and get you the suite. And she looked thought about it. And she said, I'm, I'd rather save the money. I want the toy. Oh, I said, okay. are you sure? Because it's going to take you a long time. Why are you asking if the girl's short so you can put, no, cause he, put her of kilter? No, he's, he's, he's laying it out to her properly. I, yeah, he's explaining it to her problem because what you don't want. I I've, not expect, have you not heard this? this no, but I feel like he tricked her. Though. No, okay, he yeah, didn't yeah. trick her. He didn't. No, if he if he no, didn't like say it. to her, "Are you sure?" That it would have been more of a trick no, I'm, I'm, because I'm, she wouldn't have understood how the time, the passage of time. No, is. but he asked her, and she asked him yeah, already, and he, he said, "Yeah, you have to put." You have to. Put, yeah, yeah, when you're dealing with somebody that's young, you have you to. Have, sometimes you have to reiterate yourself a few times. So I've really forced the issue home. You know, blah, 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 blah. She said, yep. I gave her, I, when she put it in, I said, good, I'm happy. You know, I, I looked at the missus like, yeah, thumbs up, you know. And then now I give her pocket money every so-so. She does the, takes a, a piggy bank, puts it in there, doesn't even think about it. Some, every couple of weeks, she takes the piggy bank because it's a digital one. She taps in her passcode. She opens it. One money, two money, three money. Daddy, I have 20 monies. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's there. She must have 30, 40 pounds in there now. And um, How much is the big toy? She, because he hasn't picked one. There's a catalogue there. Ah, so I thought when, she knew what she wanted. No, because during, during Christmas, and this, this will go back to the, to the original point of the story, we gave her the, the, um, the, the, the toy shop catalogue, was it Smith's or whatever it is? Yeah, yeah. And I thought, told her to circle what you wanted. And she was going through, circling. Remember the Argus catalogue when we used to do Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. this is the thing. There was nothing in there I couldn't, I couldn't buy. It. So she was circling this and that. And then I said, well, you're going to have to pick one. And then she picked one and, and, we, and we bought one. But then she probably still remembers some of the other things that she might want. So she can get that herself. So mm. those will be the big toys. Okay. And, and I think some of them are actually literally big. It's like they're physically big. Mm-hmm. They're not, um, so I don't know how much they are, but in her head, that would be the big toy. So, um, anyway, she'll take it out of the she counts it. And I explained to this dude, where you are teaching your child to, in fact, I didn't, I actually didn't phrase it like that. And I wasn't even thinking about it, but he put it to me like that. I said, well, you're doing that with your child and you're making them earn their money, which is cool. My child doesn't have to earn the money with me. It's they, they're going to get the money. They're going to have to do the, the chores. That's a whole separate thing. That's got nothing to do with money. You just have to do it because you live in this house or because mm-hmm. of whatever. But the money I'm going to teach you to invest it, to save it. That's what I want to do with you with money. And then he looked at me and this was after half an hour of, of them cussing me. By the time they left and him and other one is like, well, I'm going to change to your way of thinking. I'm like, what's happened? He said, well, what you're doing is you're teaching your, I'm teaching my child to be a worker. Mm-hmm. Because I said, because what they said to me is, well, the way you treat your child is like, they're going to, they, they can have anything. And they should not think that. I said, why? Should, they, yes, they should. Of course, they should think they should have everything. I'm like, no, that's boy, sport. Boy. I said they should. Boy, but you have to just work. be careful that you're not uh, turning your daughter into that girl on blue therapy or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Which one? The one that was saying that the dad has got them anything and they oh, think that, that their man should be able to get them anything because I should have anything. Yeah, but she should be able to do it herself. My whether it's that woman on blue therapy or my daughter. I mean, I'm, she's only four now, so obviously it's my job to provide for her. But at some point, it's, there's going to be a transition. So I talked about when when she gets a car. Um, her first car and it will assume that I would get her first car I said I'm not going to get her first car she's going to have to do that herself it's like but you're doing everything for now all of a sudden you're going to switch I said no there's going to be a transition and, and a teaching she's only four now she, you guys are teaching them to be work once they said it now I'm jumped, I've jumped on the bandwagon you're teaching your children to work for money which is fine don't get me wrong but I'm teaching my daughter to invest that's the difference between what we're doing and I want and you're teaching your children that they can't have everything they want and I'm teaching my child that she can't can have everything yeah, she, yeah, you can. you're not teaching her to invest you're teaching her to save well, because she's four, at some point I'm going to teach her how to invest. Okay. Like she has investments now, so she doesn't know about it, but when she's old enough, I'm going to sit her down. These are your investments. This is what I've put it into and blah, 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 blah. Um, so I've mentioned other people that, that are, that we're related to that have teenage children and that they've given a few bags to and they've said, invest. I'm going to sit here with you and, and we're going to invest together. But it's your money. If you lose it, you lose it kind of thing. Mm. So as she's just too young for that. So yes, okay. Mr. Finicky. But anyway, so that was the side issue. The thing about now passing money on mm-hmm. is that I, I, I find it hard to believe that that's actually the case because so many, in particular, the Caribbeans that came over to this country, just like she said in the 60s, and a lot of them are third generation now. Their they parents, houses, they, huh? their parents they, they have money, they have houses. And that is where the most, the, well, if you're, if you're not upper, upper, you know, upper class, that's where the most of your wealth comes from is your, is your houses. And a lot of these people have houses. Maybe they ain't dead. But also it's 30% as well. It's 30% of all black people um, in Britain actually have something 
to be able to pass over. Remember, she said it was a median number, so it's like a. <laughs> The, the problem I have is that when they say in Britain, so let, what about the people that's got, um, I'll, I'll shout out to somebody that wrote something on Twitter the other day actually about this. What about the people that's got properties abroad? Oh, well, and this is the thing. I think that this doesn't capture Include those, uh, those, but then also outside of that, in not capturing those, those are also the reason why you might not have something here. Exactly. And let's not forget that there's many people that keep money under the mattress. Yes, but that's not really inheritance, is it? Well, if they give it to you, it is. It is. It is. Money under the mattress. As if in, they're giving it to you, because if the tax man, remember tax man is taking um, the money from you. If you have enough money, when you pass it down to your children, the tax man is taking a chunk. There are some people who's like, I'd rather take it out of the bank, keep it in the yard and pass it down to my kids. Jewelry and, as well. And when I'm dead. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not about liquid though. It's this, like the assessment isn't about liquid. It's about assets. Yeah, but that's the problem. But that is an asset. No, but they, when money's they, not an asset. I'm, when I'm saying, when they talk about inheritance and those kind of things, mm. liquid as in money, they don't include in that. They include value or I think they do. If you ha- assets, if you pass if you assets, pa- property or wealth or assets, uh, yeah, or but paintings I, if, or all those kind of things, they don't. They don't. I, I believe that they will include money. There's no way that they don't. Somebody doesn't pass their child fifty k from a, from their bank into their child's bank. Yes, it get taxed forty percent inheritance tax, wherever it is. And the thing, there's no way they don't count it as as an inheritance. That oh, I'm only counting the house and the and the artwork and the gold and like tangible things. Hmm. I, Cash I, must be included. I kind of get that. Um, the whole percentage thing though because I think I mentioned this um, on a previous podcast regarding the generations of black people that have been here mm. do you know what I mean it's like you know white folks even Asians have been here longer right yeah you understand so and even the mindset of us as black people we're very I don't know man it's like we want to work extremely hard and most of the time it, it has been I need to work hard to send money back home. So it's not just I'm working for my family here. I'm also working for my family back home. I, you know I'm saying? I, but I also feel like we, and I'm just going by my own experience, traditionally haven't had an investment mindset. We've always yes. had a one for one work equals money mindset. That's what we've been handed down. I don't know if that's the same for all of you got lot as well, but that's what I've been handed down. It's like work hard, mm. get paid, mm. work harder, get paid. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there'd never been the idea or the concept of putting money into a vessel. I've had, I've had friends who have kind of echoed the same sentiment, you know, who have been around white families. Yeah. You get me? Maybe, you know, black guys have been with white girls and thing, and things like that. Yeah. And, you know, they can see the difference in uh, maybe their brother-in-law, yeah. you know, or the girlfriend's brothers and things like that and how the dad is with intent setting them up. Mm. And we're talking about many a different uh, uh, people from, from England, white English. Yeah. You get me? And, We've had a different, different experience. We we we've had a different type of struggle. Mm. Uh, you know, it is a different experience. But I think that we've had a different type of struggle where we may be overlooked for that job that we have uh, qualifications for. Mm. Because you know, when you look at the Windrush generation, you know, these were educated individuals who came over here to get top jobs yeah. and they ended up with uh you know cleaning jobs cleaning jobs bus drivers and things like that yeah you know what i mean so and again it was work hard to send money back home you get me hmm. and and a lot of these people invested you know uh, i'm not disputing that i mean they a lot of them did have houses and i know that a lot of them had houses in places like brixton and then a lot of them by mistake moved out of the central area mm. into other parts of South London. You get me? And when you look now. Yeah. Who, uh, who was to know like 30 years ago that, oh, house prices going to go who, who was to know? But I think that yeah, people knew, there bro. were people that did know they knew. and they intentionally kind of pushed, pushed them, them out. out. They're, they're, but it's, remember, every market it can be um, manipulated. manipulated. Yeah. So that's how they manipulate. You, you actually mentioned something in that, what you just said a minute ago that I find quite interesting. I wonder how many people that are in uh, interracial relationships or marriages or whatever have learned um, a different type of financial literacy by the person that they've been dealing with from another race. 
Mm. I wonder how interesting it is. Like, I would love to see somebody that's maybe married to somebody that's in the Asian community mm. and see how they've obviously do their businesses and how they work together in certain aspects and whatever. I wonder if they've been included in it. Like, I wonder if, I don't know, it, it might not happen, but the outro does. Where Hundred? Maybe a, 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 an Indian woman. That is a bad word, you know. It is. <laughs> it's like I, like I realised not too long it, it ago. It is very bad. But, um, <laughs> like a... Uh, <laughs> Like uh, maybe an Indian uh, girl marries a black man or something, um, Shut up. and there has no and their black man has no son. Does he does he encourage that that guy to maybe take over his business, mm. or does he not encourage them because he's uh, from a different race? Like I, w- I would like to see if there's any of those people that have those examples where the dad said, "You know what? You're, you're married to my daughter. I have no son. I need to pass down this to someone." Do you, are you prepared to come in and get in this work <laughs> and then how, how does that work how does that does that does that you know when you now want to go and try and do the trade with the other asian people from that community that trade together normally they're they looking at you side out like nah fam we don't we don't really, I, I, really. i'll just assume that if you threw a blanket across the whole of the uk mm. to for that example you, you could count the amount of, of of people that happens of it's exactly. actually happened to. So I think it's very interesting. I would like lo- like to see. I mean, have those conversations with people in interracial relations. The whole of the UK, which and see how <laughs> uh, how you know how their business acumen or their financial literacy has changed, or whether or not they've been involved in family businesses that they may not have been able to get involved with if they wasn't married to these people's um you know children. It'd be very. Do you think we're so bad financially that we that it's t- in today now as yeah. we're speaking today now? This is what I was going to say to you. I'm not. I'm not um, this is not a slight on black. No, way. no, no. Okay, no, no. I'm just saying oh, it would be interesting because it could be the other way around as well. I know a lot of um, black people that's got businesses and there's, um, they're married into different races and they still, you know, incorporate them into their businesses and stuff like that. So it's not... not, not I think how we're talking about money these days is different though. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that. I was going to say that there's also, um, as far as like context is concerned, um, one of the things that our parents' uh, generation didn't have uh, being in this country is they didn't have access to a lot of stuff. No information. Uh, not even just the information. They weren't, literally weren't allowed. Bank loans. Yeah. They weren't allowed to access. Mm. Credit cards. Their mortgages. Kind of, yeah. Those yeah. kind of things. Or if they were, they were given the worst rate that you could possibly have mm-hmm. without the knowledge of the fact that they were given the worst rate that you could possibly have. Mm-hmm. And to the people that's in America that obviously talk about their, their, their state and their situations, uh, they need to understand that a lot of that mirrored in the, in the UK as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, I know obviously in America, you know, they don't give black, they had black mortgages, they had yeah. black loans, they had black this way. Yeah. It yeah. would be like 30% more than a white person. Yeah. Was. Called or, redlining. Yeah, exactly. And, and don't think that, that didn't happen in the UK because it did it happened my, my parents, parents good for were, my parents were a victim of that Samuel Jackson and uh, what's it uh, Michael Vic, what's, what's the, uh, the one the Winters not the Winters the, the um, Falcon yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got a film together where that's, yeah. that's the premise of it. It's a yeah. good film where they where, all start like looking for banks. Yeah, they they want to they oh, want to buy boy they want to buy properties, but because they're black, they can't do it. So they get a white. You know they have money and they have the knowledge, mm. but it, they're black. They so get they a white face, yeah, in. white face to, to that doesn't know nothing about to, nothing to front the business. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and this is based on the truth. Name of that film? Yeah, it's a good film. And but again, it's something that people don't recognize that in other countries that still happens. It happens in Africa still. We've with, with Africans. Mm. <laughs> I'm pretty certain. Mm. I'm pretty certain it happens there as well. You, you, white rate, listen, black rate. I, I was listening to a story about a South African soldier in the Second World War who was. Maybe it's the first or second world war. Sorry, I can't remember which war it is. But basically, there there are black regiment in South Africa. They volunteered. It was second world war. They volunteered to fight for the British um, against the you know whatever the, the, Germans. the Germans and whatnot. And they had spares because they were not allowed guns. guns. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So basically, this person died, and uh, they want to get a better uh, uh, medal for them because of uh, some bravery that they got a medal but they said no what they did they deserved the top top medal and they only got like a, a mid-tier one mm. but they, uh, it must be because they're black because of the stuff they did they should get the uh, I don't know, medal of honor well, no. purple heart or whatever it is but the British version of the purple, I can't the, think of purple the heart is, is American it's something, something cross or whatever but Red um, no <laughs> uh, but I, I didn't know like yeah they, they weren't, that regiment the black regiment was not allowed guns they're going to war and they were not Allowed guns because they might and just you, turn around and shoot you. They might say the Germans ain't done shit to me. You, they, <laughs> and 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 that it's a madness. It, it is a madness, but in 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 reality, that's it's very real, isn't it? If you think about it, and this is the kind of anyway we're going off in track. Africa. We're going off track. Yeah, sorry, but, um, yeah. That, that blew my head when I heard that. The man. film is the banker. 
The yeah, actor yeah. is Anthony Mackie. Anthony, Anthony Mackie, Mackie yeah. and Samuel yeah. Jackson. You can so, find it on Apple Plus mm. or on Apple uh, mm. Apple Plus TV. Did, did, did we talk about the film? Um, I I care a lot. I, I, I care a lot. Put a pin on that until we finish this topic, and then we could we could discuss that. Has everyone but, watched but, it? Though? But be aware of your time. Yeah, what, what time oh, do you need shit, to? Bro. Do you do you not need to be out of here? Okay, I got like thirty five minutes. I think. Right, then, about let, 30 minutes. Let's let's spin through this quickly then. Yeah, so I was just saying, yeah, in the context, um, our people didn't have the access to it. They didn't have the knowledge to access, and I think now, um, strangely, well, not strangely, with the way information is readily available, I do see a concerted effort, especially with some of the younger generation, some of our generation as well, are getting very much into um, types of investing. Mm. I see that it's not entirely strategic and entirely like informed at the moment. A lot of gambling is happening at the Bruh, moment. People are just following, following. All it is is a trend again. And that's my issue with it. Yeah. So a lot of people are following this trend. Suddenly my mom was talking to me about investments in crypto and all this stuff. I said, do you actually like know it? Well, I see everyone doing it. Mm. So he's like, she's not on it. She's like, I, I know. Yeah, what's little- the problem with that, man? No, because I don't always want you to just put money into stuff you don't know nothing well, about. I let my mum, is same thing, what, two weeks ago? She started and she joined up to Binance or whatever and she's, now she's she's the owner of, of multiple different <laughs> That's crypto. fine, but I, 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 I don't want my wife to do something because Everybody else she's is doing, doing it. it. I want like, and she's not. She's very, very good with her money. Mm. So I don't want her to now just you know. She's and I'm, I'm, I'm. Let me just put this clear. She's not doing it. She herself is smart enough to know that I don't know what I'm doing. Blah blah. blah. I'm not saying that I'm just telling her. Blah blah blah. Mm. But when she came to talk to me about, it, I was like, why? Why are you have? Why are we having this discussion because now? Because people are making money from it. That's what I, you know. I can't trust everybody saying that they're making money okay. from it either. Okay, but it's, so there's people that lie, often. All right. So again. And people that have bad advice as well. So again, you need to be careful about the people that you take advice from in these types of situations. Yeah. They may one minute they're up, but they never tell you when they're down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so you got to be careful. So um, I think it's a trend. I think people are seeing all of these crypto millionaires and all of these people that say they invest in the money. They did this, they did that, but I invested, I invested the money. money. You, the way you did it last week gave me so much pleasure. <laughs> I invested the money. You did it very well last week. I don't know why, anyway. but um, I think I think that it has to be careful that people shouldn't just be throwing money around that because they I'm, the, 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 I'm encouraging my missus yeah, but the difference between certain people Stav mm. right you really just said that you can go into a, 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 a catalogue and pick what you want mm. certain people are betting their food bruv yeah but uh, yeah, but we. Well, I'm not so my missus is not yeah, and, your, and your missus wouldn't but either. I'm saying in general it's becoming a trend so as much as I like that fact that people are trying to make investments there are people that maybe can't afford the investments that they're making and they're not knowing that you know tomorrow that thing can go to zero and it ain't coming back up again. I got I got people at work, yeah. Um <laughs> I work with a lot of younger folks, young uh Asian guys as well, you know, blacks and Asians and whites and what have you, but mostly Asians, and they are throwing serious money into this thing. They've won a lot, but they've lost a lot as well. And I agree with um with what Big O'Hala is saying, like it's it's very much uh riding a wave and it's, it's, it's very much trendy to get into now. And I'm all for getting into it. Because it's easy Be- right now. Before it was hard <laughs> to invest, you know, you have, yeah, to, yeah, you yeah. have to go somewhere and like, obviously, like, pr- now to, to buy stuff, is, there's an app. Exactly. Do it's, it, man. It's, it's very easy to do so. If you're doing it res- responsibly, yeah, then, responsibly, then fine. Always I got, gamble responsibly. I, I got this guy, yeah, but the thing is, anyway. As long as you know he's gambling. I got this guy at work now and, and, He's a young lad, man, but he's like throwing in like five grand here and 10 grand there and 15 grand here. And I'm like, bruv, like, why don't you put a deposit on a property? You get me? Put a deposit on a property, rent that property out and use that yield to invest the money. You get what I'm saying? But a lot of people are getting uh, news. They're getting news. They get information about this crypto, about this year. And then they're going through this gambling thing that you're doing in it. Cause I know that Stephos loves a little bit of a, of a flutter, you know, yeah. he loves a little bit of a flutter in it, but I don't like to do my trades like that. And, and when I have conversation with uh, more experienced traders, they go through a real rigorous analysis before they buy or before they put in a trade. And this is something that these people are not doing. What, what, what they're doing is that they're, reading on fundamental analysis which is news and this news is new to us 
but it's old to, to other people. To other people. You understand what I'm saying? And and that's where they kind of catch you out. This is a game. It's like they're trying to catch you out and they catch a lot of people out. And Mr. Wolf, one thing I always say we need to be careful of because a lot of these men are the same men that are obsessed with fast money, right? That's and it. trading doesn't necessarily mean fast money. So you're trying to pump all this money because you think you're going to get fast returns. And it's not it's, necessarily going to get no, fast no, no, returns. Like tra- trading potentially is fast money. It's investment is not fast money. Okay, trading, okay, even then. But the fast money returns can also come with fast... Uh, uh, yeah, losses. Uh, yeah, it's, losses. It's, that, that's the thing. It's fast. Right? So it's not a case of like, uh, like the losses that you may... Like, let's say, let's use a shot, yeah? A shot that's, that makes 10 grand tomorrow but spends that 10 grand on something, yeah? They're at least going to see something. They might see the Louis Vuitton. They may see this. They may see this, that. They may see that. Mm. You might put 10 grand into crypto and get nothing. Okay. Nothing at all. All right. But you need to understand that you might get nothing. No, because people don't understand it. They think I, I they think want... people. I think people do not understand. No, because uh, this is what I'm saying. You, you, you're you assuming because you've got sensible head that everyone else does, <laughs> right? When there's people that's out there, you have to remember there's people out there that's hustling these, these people and saying, yeah, you, you, you know, come and, and do this. I'll teach you how to do the investment. I never lost any money. I'll blah, 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 blah. Give me five grand to show you how to do it. You give them the man the five grand. Yeah, this is how I do my things, blah, 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 blah. That man's not and in any money of his investment he's earning the five grand off you by the way right yeah. and, and, and other people that he's doing right and then boom they go in and thinking that they're going to get guaranteed re- re- returns they're not getting guaranteed returns so you gave it to the area boys you invested the money basically mm. so please I, I, I agree with simple I do understand and I like the fact that these people are getting involved in certain things I'm assuming that you're also saying the same thing as well but it is a trend and people need to make sure that they understand what they're dealing with because this trend will go away in the next couple of months and something else new will be there and then they will be wanting to spend their money on that. Every every so often, there's a trend where people... It's like a partner, isn't it? Everybody sees... There's a trend where people feel, this is the way we can make money, blah, 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 blah. And as a community, people rush to try and do that thing. I've I got to be honest. I think that this is here to stay for mm. quite crypto a while. Crypto is here to stay. Because, I'm, because I'm of about crypto. What are you I'm, talking about? I'm talking about he's, the, he's, the trading. He's, he's talking about the trend, trend isn't it? Because, uh, but, 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 let, let, hold on, before you think, I'm talking about this, doing this, getting into trading and suspending, yeah. doing all that type of stuff. I'm telling you now, yeah. these people that's talking about all of this, that about, have you seen a suicide rate of people that do trading? Yeah, it's gone up this year as well. Do you do you see it? Yeah, everything, yeah, suicide has gone up. Okay. Like people don't know people are jumping off buildings because they've lost millions of pounds and they and they have millions of pounds. Mm-hmm. You just got, no, don't even have 1,000. And you know you're gonna lose thirty thousand that you can't bring yeah, back. Yeah, that's because they'll be in the minus a lot of them. Some of them, remember, remember, I've, I've, I've made this analogy all the time. I said when I used to play poker, I'd go to the table, whether it's a digital or a real t- table, with a hundred pound, and if I lose a hundred pound, I have to get up and cash, get, retrieve more cash to go back and sit at the table to lose that money again. Whereas there are certain aspects of trading, which is those high risk ones, which is the ones that's jumping off of buildings, where they put in a hundred pounds, and at the end of the day, they are minus one thousand. Like now, I have to find a thousand that I didn't actually have. That's like to, future to trading, isn't it's, it? Yeah. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't understand it that. until I was, I was with uh, our cousin the other day, and that's then futures. Like, oh, oh. You see, but you didn't understand. I, but no, there's people that you don't that don't understand that. I don't, will jump, yeah, I don't, they'll I don't, jump into it. I don't do that one. Yeah, but there's you. But there's that's people that will jump the into spread it. betting one. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. The spread I, betting. I, I, and I spread betting is the one that they always teaching. It's, it's, yeah, it's addictive. That's that dangerous, one. man. It's addictive. This is violence. I'm the, I, I am. I am not willing yet to put in a hundred margin trading. Turn around. And then when I look at the screen again, somebody's saying, "Yeah, you owe me nine hundred Yeah. Now. So how, where did that come from? It's where did that come from? Oh, I, didn't, I didn't offer it. To, it no, happens. No, no, no. And a, lot, a lot of people are doing spread bet training. So all of these FX, this, that, blah, blah, blah. A lot of them are doing spreads. Yeah, the IG. And they're betting on spreads. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, that's what I'm telling you. But that's you, where you make the fast money. But yeah. then you also I've, lose. I've sat, I've sat down with people and it's like, yeah, they just made it three grand just now. But two minutes. They, but then they, just in two but minutes. But then they blink and before you yeah. can click to, to send it out again, it's gone. And then it's like, wow. And then look at it. Oh, what's happening now? Oh, well, it's gone back to zero now. <laughs> it's, it's gone. It, what, just, 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 so, just. I, and I said anyway, I, I don't, I'm just very worried for certain people and, you know. If there's anyone out there that wants to learn about trading, holler at your boy, Mr. Wolf. You get me? You can catch you on Instagram on AK Mr. Wolf on See? Twitter on AK underscore Mr. Wolf. And I'm being deadly serious. The man, and Mr. Wolf is Wolf, 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 And I'm being deadly serious. Like, um, I'm talking about learning it from a very kindergarten method, very uh, uh, slow and methodical. If you really want to know how to trade properly, you get me? Not this uh, uh, quick money business, not the whole, you know, get money quick scheme. It's none of that. This is proper things. If you really want to learn and you really want to know, let me know. Simple. All right. That's a good look still. I like mm. the way you just plugged mm. it. He, told, he, hasn't told, he hasn't actually told any of us that sit here. 
Well, I've that, kind of. Bec- no, no, the thing is that you guys are doing something completely different to the way that I'm trading. You guys are more. I mean, I really do want to invest more in crypto. Mm. Um, I've only but, just but, started crypto, but yeah, but I do more forex and indices and more intraday and day trading, whereas you guys are more doing stocks and shares. And I'm not really into stocks. I, and shares. I've been, no. I've been trying. Um, I've had a, a paper account now for a good few months trying to do, uh, day trading and swing trading, but I'm doing it on stocks and, um, it's, it's a journey, bruv. And yeah, it's, but you haven't got the time. It's a lot of work, huh? That's people's job, you know. I know. I haven't got the time. You're right. But still. Are, are you up. watching Bloomberg every day? Are you doing like there's mm, there's so many that's what I'm saying. there's so many apps that these people are using? That's what what Mr. Wolf is saying about people are finding things that hours afterwards, or, yeah, or, yeah, afterwards. It's true because there's people that have got actual applications. How much are, is a Bloomberg terminal that, that they pay uh, for? It's about a, a couple, maybe, maybe like a grand a month or something like that. Maybe a bit more yeah. or maybe cheaper. I don't know what you look the thing. I'm talking about big, big, big businesses. They pay money, boy. They got their keyboards that alert them, bing, bing, to tell you when yeah, something's like, have... like. There's all of this stuff that they, mm. there's plenty of people that have plenty of tools. They have more than one PC because the one PC is not powerful enough. And I'm talking about i8 64 gig machines are not powerful enough to run the the the, the queries that need to be run to do these things that they're doing. Mm. And you think you're there with your little laptop is going to be touching these man's? No way. No yeah, obviously way. I'm not working at that scale, but I'm I'm trying my thing. Um, doing like TA on charts and that chart reading and all them kind of thing. They're looking at accumulated volume and that shit. Yeah. I've been doing it for, for a good few months now. Mm. Um, and my account is break even, well, <laughs> which means I've lost the, and I've the, gained. I'm just saying there's a lot of reasons why people work in banks and not just do their own trade. But, but the thing is, mm. is, is what, what I do want to say, I know what Big O'Halle is saying is the truth. I'm not trying to throw water on it. But um, consumer traders are making money, bruv. Like, there's people out there that I'm talking about young kids, 18, 19, 20, in their early 20s, that have learned this thing and they're doing very, very well. I, there's, saw, there's, I just saw a thing today that you started on £200 and made 200000 in... Crypto. Was it crypto? I believe so. he's He's breaking the rules of... Um, of the ratio but if you know the game and if you know what you're doing then you can do that mm. you get what i'm saying so there are people out here that are making money and they're trading um uh with uh what's the word i'm looking for uh re- they're doing it in a responsible way mm. you get me and they're making a relatively amount risk management of- that's the word I'm You just need for. to be careful. They're making a relatively uh, amount of good money out Go there. Go for it. So, so um, but I will say ab- about the demo accounts, mm. as you know anyway, but for those out there that don't know, like when you are, when, when you have a demo account in comparison to a real monetary account, it's, it's completely it's different. different yeah, the emotions it's, are it's different. It's like the emotions and, 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 and this is where I have personally think that I am, um, I have the potential to be a good trader is because I don't let these things bother me. It's like, if it goes, it goes. Um, but I trust the analysis that I've done that it's going to come through. Wait, are, you, are, you, are you putting a large amount of money though? Because you in, say if in, it goes, in, it goes. It, 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 a couple I'm, hundred I'm, I'm, is, is different to 10 grand. Yeah, but if I have 10,000 pounds, if I'm going to trade with that amount of money, it's not going to, it's not really going to bother me. So no, I'm not trading ten thousand pounds, but I don't want to be losing a hundred or two hundred pound a day. So it's it's like there's there's a complete different there's a disparity, a completely different look when it comes to a, a, a dummy account and a real account. No, I, and, I know, I know, I'm and, and, and I just think that you need to be a have a certain mentality. Not every this ain't for everybody. I know it's, that. It's, I, it's, that's it's, why I don't do it. It's 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 like uh, for example people that do uh, trade stocks and shares, sometimes if you trust what you have done, if you trust your analysis, leave it there. Oh yeah, man. You yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My stuff Don't is look down. at my it every, every week and every two days and think, oh my God, oh my God. Leave it there. Something like, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Stavros knows about SPX, mm. the 500 biggest yeah. countries, oh, uh, biggest, biggest companies yeah. in the United States. Just leave it there. 
it's guaranteed that that shit is going to rocket. It's going to continue to go no, up. No, rocket. It's just going, it's going to increase. <laughs> it's no, going to increase always. and it's going to it continue always. to increise. Okay. So yeah, there's, yeah, that, so no, that, there's no company in the SP500, XPX500 that has ever gone bankrupt and gone down. No, no. You put it as a cluster. You buy, oh, okay, you you buy a basket. Yeah. You buy a basket. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it goes... And you, you, you know and it, what I'm most And it, it, goes and it will and go down. Yeah, it, yeah, it goes up and down, but the, the line always goes mm. in a diagonal up. Oh, up. Let me say... Oh, yeah, yeah. Another thing I was meant to tell you as well, Stav. Um, I recently had my financial statement for the last year and I made 135 dollars in dividends okay uh, in dividends in one year yeah right. and the stock that i've got the dividends on i don't have that many shares in them at all like you have to tell me which one it is yeah um, there's some i had one one what was it it's giving like about no i heard i'm in my head i'm thinking seven but no way it can't be seven dollars uh, uh, it gave me i got 29 dollars from one from for, uh, per share guys guys on the dividend guys guys, guys. sorry go ahead yeah, yeah. We, we, i think we have i got my, my my point seven pence from apple uh this, this, Wonderful <laughs> this month nah. i think we need to uh, maybe change up the subject yeah sorry let's change it so what was it uh uh who yeah wolf i asked you to put a pin in something i got you i got you i hate you later what's it called <laughs> i i'm i i care for you i care a lot just before you uh, just before because that's, that's going to be a conversation I I just want to ask one question. Has everybody watched it though? Yeah, yeah, we've all watched it now. Yeah, go on. I just want to ask one question and you just say yes or no and then we and then we move on to your thing. Is Marcus Garvey a household name in this country? No. Wahala says no. No. So, um, Simple says no. In the black community? No, no, in this country, in the UK. No. Uh, uh, even in the black community, no. Okay, let's, yeah, that's a separate I would even say no. In the black community? No. No. Household name? No, I don't Simple want to Simon's saying no. I'm Mr. Not, Wolf is I'm saying... I'd say no as well. Okay. It's unfortunate, but it is the case. Okay. I, 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 I remember posting a photograph of uh, Thomas Sankara. Mm. Uh, I think it was the anniversary of his death. And I said that the mere fact that our children don't know his name is a problem. You get me? And I think he should be a household name along with the likes of uh, the Honourable Marcus Garvey, Dr. Marcus Garvey. Well, it's up to us to you teach our children. It is, it is, it is. But anyway. Go ahead, bro. Um, I think it Spoilers was you. Ahead. Spoilers, Spoilers ahead. Spoilers ahead. Spoilers ahead to this film, but I think it was you, Yeah, Stavros. I did a Stavros says about that film. In, uh, and he suggested that I watch the film. The film is called I Care A Lot. It is uh, starring... The guy from Game of Thrones, which is uh, Peter Drinklage mm-hmm. and uh, Rose Tyrion Lannister, Roseman Pike, yeah. and um, it is a film related to um, elderly homes, fraud, and fraud. And shout out my Nigerians. And let me tell you something: <laughs> we don't do ugly old, <laughs> but we the do fraud. <laughs> we do fraud. Elderly homes and fraud. Yeah, maybe you will be able to give the premise of the film, but. I'll just tell you a little bit about how I felt during the, the movie. Yeah. yeah. Do you, the, shouldn't it give the premise first before you give it to me? Just let me say, man. Just let me talk, bro. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to, I'm just yeah, trying to put things in a better order. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I felt so many emotions watching that film and I was just pissed off watching it from beginning all the way through to the end until the very last bit. A horrible film, nasty film. It's a great film. But go and watch it. It's a great film. It's it is a great film, but I just felt so uncomfortable watching it. I tell you, I never I never thought about that scam. But it's out there. Yeah, of course so it's out there, but I did never thought about it. It's, again, and this is what made me realise that there are some cabitious people in the world. Mm. Say that one again. Cabitious. Yes. Cabitious. There's so, some cabitious people in the world. So just to, to, to give you a bit more of a flesh out of me, or are you, are you reading to flesh? I've just got a very short blurb. Go on. And you can explain it. The film follows a court-appointed guardian who seizes the assets of elderly people for her own, only for her to get mixed up with a dangerous gangster. Yeah. So basically, the scam scam is basically they will make uh, an elderly person believe like they they can't cope with their own estate. Or cope with themselves. Or themselves, yeah. Make them sound like they're a mad person or they're too old to blah, blah, blah. Ends up putting them in homes. Mm-hmm. And then taking their their property. So basically, the thing we were talking about with this inheritance and their properties, and whatever, taking them, taking ownership of them, putting it in their names, and then using it as their own like finance thing. So they might uh, put loans against it, or they might you know put the thing in their name and and basically just and, rinsing people's and money, doing it 
in the court of, of law. law. Yeah. So like the opening scene, like we say, there's spoilers. If you do not want to listen to what we're saying, please just fast forward or just stop because I think we're going to be done after this. Yeah. But um, in the opening scenes, there is a man trying to get his mother out of this home. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. She's in the home. And then there's this woman who's convinced this judge that no, your mother needs to stay in this home and she needs me to look after her. I, and just, the, just imagine that. And the thing that is another, um, I think is a good aspect that they show is that it wasn't the showing it from one side. There was multiple people involved in the scam. There was the court of law that was involved in this. What well, was the law? The, no, the, the the court. Court. They were oblivious. They were, yeah. Okay. So what the, the doctors. the doctors were involved in the scams. Yes. The actual care homes were involved in the scams. Yes. Like all of these different aspects was involved in the scams. And it's like, wow. And I, I don't know that care homes is almost like prisons. Because obviously they make money off people that go to prison yeah, yeah. and it's going to make money that people that go to care homes. So mm. I'm clearly certain that they just, this is something that they do where they pretend like people is mad. Yeah, of course. So they can put them in care homes so of they can course. retrieve money. Same way, I'm assuming, I already, I already told you about doctors and how they put people on mental health registers to make money and all that type yeah. of stuff already. Yeah. I'm pretty certain they probably do the same thing with this as well. So to get keep giving you medication so you can keep pumping the mm-hmm, money off you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was a very, very eye-opening film. And the woman that's in it is the same woman that's in Gone Girl and she's crazy in Gone Girl and she's crazy this. <laughs> I, 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 I believe she's crazy in real life. And, I, 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 and now I need to meet her because I want to know if she's actually crazy like this. But um, she's, um, I think it's a really, 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 really good movie. And it, um, it's a full circle type movie. That gets five stars for me, bruv. Yeah. And like, at the time that I watched it um, or when I was watching it, even at the end, you know, being vexed and pissed off. I've never had any kind of emotion like that whilst whilst watching a movie. I mean, I've watched a fair well, ever, ever. And you've seen Roots. I've I've seen <laughs> Roots is a TV series, isn't it? But I, but I get what you're saying. But <laughs> I don't know, man. I just felt so the way you, the man, message that like, you sent me. I was like, what did I, I say? I can't remember now, but I just remember thinking, "Yeah, oh my god!" I, I, I will t- I'll be honest. With I think you. I must have said that I hate the film. Yeah, but I, you but hate- I hate it, but I love it. Such I think what was so good about the film was it was very unassuming. So, ironically, um, before Stav had said to watch the film, I had seen the title somewhere and I'd seen the front cover. And uh, with me, I normally take a film based on. I don't, like I don't read synopsis, for example. I'm not the type of person that reads a synopsis to go and watch same, a film. Same. I listen to. I will take a title, or I'll see the front cover, and I'll be like, "Oh, that might sounds sounds like it might be same, interesting." Same thing with trailers. I try. Not yeah, to I don't. Bother. I don't I try not to do that. I don't want the spoiler because the way I uh, view films is like, if you as a director um, and um, screenplay writer or what have you have done your job correctly, I should understand and know what the film is about after watching the film mm-hmm. I should have a very good idea and then maybe I might read the synopsis after I've watched it to say oh whether it met you know what, what it was so with this I saw the title a number of times and I just kept scrolling past it yeah kept scrolling past it and then you mentioned it and I thought I swear I've seen that went to go and watch the film and as I'm watching the film I'm sitting there and I'm like this is a fucking madness yeah man and it's I'm like, it's like it is in the assault of the senses in a very, very different type of way. Normally, things are blowing up in films and all the rest mm, of it. Mm, There's mm. none of that, in, or very little of that in here, but your senses are insulted all the way through. That's I'm, what so, I'm, I'm saying. so glad you man felt like that because I thought, when I watched this, I thought, there's something inside that's stirring in me. And it's like, when I told people to watch it, I just, I just didn't actually think anybody else would feel that way. So when you man were coming back with I was like, yes, it's not just me. It's no, just, it's, 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 old people and children. Yeah, mm. it's properly one of those ones that uh, it will more than likely a story emotion in you. And if it doesn't, I'm questioning to some degree, what type of person are you? Yeah. The, the, who, who what yeah. type of mentality that you are? Can, because, can, because that was, oh, sorry, I, not, I think not, you not don't Stavros. care. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying to you? I Which is you. ironic because the film's called I Care A Lot. If you watch that film and don't have any feelings, you don't care as far as I'm concerned. Big while I mentioned uh, Roots in it. Yeah. And obviously slavery films and you get a certain emotion. It, but I think when I was, when I watched Roots, I was very young. Yeah, I mean, so I was still kind of getting to understand and it was more films after that which really rattled my cage. But it's a different type of of feeling when you are watching these slavery films. This one here, like I said, it brought certain emotions and feelings that I've never had, ever had 
whilst watching the movie. I'm, like I said, I think it, hits, it will hit a Nigerian more than most. Have you seen um? What's that? Phone you can explain Idris, why Idris on that tele the way he used to he was pretending to be an African soldier. Yeah, I mean this thing. And sometimes I just randomly say it like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have the this thing. <laughs> you to I can somebody that's from Africa have like that that very terrible accent. But anyway, what's it called again? Half what's it called? Some some I can't remember. But but it's about the Mr. Like, Wolf Friday. It's the it's what well, it's about uh, child soldiers. Child soldiers, yeah. That, oh, okay, okay. That had an emotion for me. That's one of them ones where I kind of like I just wiped it from my memory, man. It's that too, that had some emotion. For you me. know, you know when um so just just to spin it off quickly, you know what was it? Find Comey or or, or Comey the one? Yeah. The, was it Uganda? The Coney. the the, the Coney, the um. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. rebel warrior that um there was a big hoo ha about yeah uh, six seven eight years ago now where it, um one of his people that worked underneath him has just been tried. You remember that person I said they, they, they were sending him back to his, to his country? Yeah, yeah. The Beast of a Nation. That's right. Beast of a Nation, mm-hmm. yeah. So, in fact, it was no, anyways, just been tried. Now, the thing is, this person was recruited as a child soldier. And he got, what did he get? He got a set, set amount of years. He's, he's in his 60s or 70s now. He's an old person. But he got maybe 20 years or 30 years, something like that. He didn't get life. And this is for mass murder, rape, uh, uh, abduction, t- making children into child soldiers himself. But he got a leniency. So instead of getting life, he got many, many years, probably going to die in jail or whatever it is, or he'll be very old when he comes out. But he, the leniency is that because you were recruited as a child mm-hmm. soldier yourself and your parents were, were, were killed, you were recruited and you had to do all these atrocities, even though you then became the person that did that with other people, that kind of money. we're taking that into account. And even though, because they wanted to him to get off, his lawyers were saying he needs to be off because of it. And I said, no, we can't let you off. So you're still going to jail for a long time, but you're not going to jail for life, which we could have sent you for, um, mm. for the, for those atrocities. So it was very interesting to me because it's, it's, I, I could, I could understand it. If people actually took the time to read into the child soldiers and whatnot, you won't be fucking giving all your money to dogs, homes, and all this type of Some stuff. Some people man. would. I just, I just, I just don't know. Anyway, let me not, so, let me not talk. Yeah, about that. I would, um, I, I, that thing is a proper depressing thing for me. Mr. Wolf, if you don't mind, I'm going to read a, a little backwards and forwards about this film. I mind. Um, yeah, I'm going to ignore <laughs> that. He, he sent me this message. He said, I did not enjoy that film at all, but it's still good. Not sure if that makes sense, but I was raging during the movie. I said, I think I get you. He said, I, I said, karma will come for her after the first major scene. And it did. For me, it was such a happy ending. <laughs> I said, this man of God, you know, doesn't, doesn't know forgiveness. Well, I mean, God, God knows wrath. God, God didn't know forgiveness. Nah. He said, nah. It's Jesus that knows forgiveness. God said, never had to forgive a goddamn person. He said, nah, she needed to go to the gates of hell. <laughs> Ruining families for monetary gain. That's mad. No heart in her at all. Is that what I wrote, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he even, you know, she I needed can't to go to the gates of hell. I said that, you know. That's how raging that I was you know, raging. You know the scene that, where, because I, I hate the woman yes. hated I had a little a little yeah okay this is my last little thing I had a little bit of mm, for her but the bit where I said this woman was actually gangster is when she, she put the tooth back in her mouth yeah, yeah. I said this woman is gangster yeah. actual gangster yeah. so um, watch the film I care a lot so uh, yeah that would be my Star Wars says again this week I think okay. everybody's recommending it so alright on that note you get your two hours and we are going to do our church notes and our goodbyes and play some music while we're doing it. Uh, Big Wahala, you can go first. I Big Wahala Insta, I Big Wahala on Twitter. I've been back to the cinema, watched two films already. Already? Flipping I watched one today, I watched one on Wednesday. What did you watch? I watched, today I watched yeah, Those yeah. Who Want Me Dead with Angelina Jolie and uh, The Punisher. That was alright. Nothing big, not, not special, but it was alright. And then I also watched Spiral. Spiral. Is that yeah. good? Chris. Croc needs to just accept he's a comedian and he's not an actor. Oh, wow. Really? He's all, it was all right in um, Fargo. Yeah, I heard Fargo's supposed to be good. He's all right in Fargo, but this film, I'm just like, you just don't seem comfortable. He doesn't seem comfortable doing it. It wasn't the worst film I've ever watched. It's not the best. It, it's, it's, it, it's basically trying to, it's so, cause it's a sore, um, it's a, it's like a short, um, shoot off of sore. Mm hmm. But, um, offshoot of saw, yeah. Offshoot of saw, but it's not. So he's trying to be clever like it. But I worked out the film so quickly, like it was just like oh, it's just so easy for me to work out. And usually in saw, you don't work out the film until the very end at all. Mm-hmm. But this one, I worked it out like that, and I was like, oh. so it's not as clever. But it's, it's you, you can watch it. I just don't think you should run to the cinema to watch it if you're not a cinema goer. You don't have a cinema card or whatever. Just watching your house. 
So you risked it all. Risked what? You risked it all to go and watch the film, innit? No, I'm, I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking about money. Mm, okay. That's what I said. If you've not got a cinema. No, but I mean to go to the cinema. You have to. You're, you're in now. I have proximity. Have a vaccine. Now. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wolf. You can catch me on Instagram on aka Mr. Wolf and Twitter on aka underscore Mr. Wolf. Um, nothing to recommend, man. I'm out. Simple Simon. At Simple Simon FB on Twitter. Don't have Instagrams. Guys, always say forever. If you get an opportunity, uh, Alliance of the Foundation. If you get the opportunity, have a look at that Bloomberg article. Um, it is titled How London. Uh, Property, oh Jesus, hang on one second, sorry. How London's property boom left Black Britons with nothing. Um, it's on Bloomberg. It was from the 18th of May. If you send me the, the link, I'll put it in the shadows. Yeah, we can do that too. Oh, so that be w- careful with, with Bloomberg as well, because you look at enough in a month, you can't look at anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's one of them ones. So yeah, I'll send you the link for that. That's so, my plug. So that means the show notes. Um... Okay, I am Stavros Boss. You can find me at Stavros Boss everywhere. My Stavros says this week is the film and also a game that you can get on iOS or Android. It's called Queen Amina. It's, it was, it was, uh, it was made and created and published by a friend of the pod, a friend of ESN. Shout him out. Uh, him and his family, uh, good, good dude, good, good, good Nigerian dude with deep, deep voice. And he, he made a game. He's put it out there. Uh, I should have promoted it ages ago, but um, I hollered at it, or he hollered at me because it was my birthday um, uh, last week, and uh, he reached out to me to say happy birthday, and he sent me a link to this song that was on the trailer for the the game. So he had a trailer for the game on YouTube, and lots of people asked him about the music. So what he did was he just he just got a song. So he's got a, a Hausa artist mm-hmm. to to rap, and the the song was banging. And I said, hey, I have to play that, man. So um, I'm going to play it here. It's called Wear Your Crown by Morel, featuring Dija. And uh, yeah, that, that link will be there as well. Don't let nobody tell you you are not enough. You are queen. I can't jump the water yaki. Look at you, yaki. In that kid, yaki, cheer about you. So I only come on queen. I'm in a dozen so so naked. Dick Yamaji. So I'll play that one out, but um, yeah, hopefully, man, we'll make some money off that because it's actually on on your streaming sites and whatnot. You can do that there. So you can find us us collectively at ESM Podcast on all your social medias. Use the hashtag ESM Pod to start or join in the conversation. Email us at ESNPodcast at gmail.com if you want us to discuss anything or tell us anything in private. Rate and review us, please. Five stars on all your podcast apps. Thank you very much for tuning in to 305 uh, episode of Eloquently Say Nothing. It's the Miami Dade County episode as far as I'm concerned. Shout out to my brothers and big up DJ Web Singer who wasn't here. Gaza, guess what? We didn't have no emergency services drive by this week. We did. Oh shit, all right, say it standard. Anyway, remember, if you ain't saying nothing, say it well. Slag for life. Welcome to the SN Podcast. Boys and girls, cats and dogs, rodents and other small insects. Welcome to the SN Podcast. So in a key, they came out of Africa, so that's so. Precious and the Yafi did it to Kuni has came. One day, yes, and there are Jungu and Sadolias and Yemana. I could is any Yarinya, Kaki Berwani, a Denamiki and Chi. Rock on the Miji gets Oroma Chemezuchia. Ricket there a Janki Yarinya Kijini. I'm a lady. Yamata, yes, you can do it. I'm a lady. Yamata, let nobody put you down. I'm a lady. Yamata, yes, you can do it. Ladies, your mother, stand your ground, stand your ground.